It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Some great conversations ahead for you. We'll talk about the mess at Uber, but also how to know what's really true. Jeff and Gina and I are next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twig This Week in Google, episode 276, recorded November 19th, 2014. Don't be Uber. This Week in Google is brought to you by SmartThings. SmartThings lets you control and monitor your home from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. To get started, visit smartthings.com slash twit, and you'll save 10% off any home security or solution kit when you use the code TWIT10 at checkout. And by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace that connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Now introducing Squarespace 7 with even better site management tools and other improvements. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIG. It's time for TWIG this weekend. Google, the show that covers Google, the Googleverse, the Google Cloud, all the other clouds that are puffing along right next to the Google Cloud. Oh, wait a minute. That one's a vape cloud. Ignore that one. Also, Facebook and Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Gina Trapani of thinkup.com. Hello. Good to have you, Gina. She's Good also to be here. host of All About Android. Oh, yeah. Tuesday Spreading nights. Network every Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. We make her, make her work right in the middle of the week. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis is back home where uh, the snow, how, has it come up to the windows yet, Jeff? I'm not in Buffalo, thank goodness. <laughs> the East Coast is not all the same. <laughs> yes, it is. I, th I think Gina should put her hoodie over her head since she's freezing. <laughs> Both of it you, is, I think. It's, it is freezing here. <laughs> this is why I have my, like, fuzzy, muzzy hoodie on here because. <laughs> wow, that's cute. Is that a yeah. Uniqlo hoodie? It's cold. You look so adorable in that. <laughs> I don't. I think this was like a Sam's Club special. My mother-in-law gave it to me. It's great. It's so warm. <laughs> you really understand when you're walking around in uh, you know sub freezing weather why warm wear, warm weather gear is so important. Yes, <sighs> yes. I'm I'm being re reminded after I was kind of in denial about the winter because I moved back last winter. I was I was like, oh, this is a weird freak thing. Now I'm like, oh, we committed to this. <laughs> this is going to be oh, a seasonal crap. thing. And, yeah, exactly. And it's really February that you really start hating it. November, oh. this is nothing. I was like, it's not even December yet <laughs> today. That's what I was saying. I was saying, no friend. It's not even December. What is this? Oh, wrong. No. Uh, wrong. Stay inside. Stay warm. Be toasty. Well, it's going to be 65 this weekend. Oh, good. Because I now feel like my parents talking about the weather. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Let's let's instead, let's talk about Uber. Ooh. Oh, boy. Oh, cool. At first, I wasn't gonna, but now I feel like I have to. Let's let's do it. Let's do oh, this. It's, it's phenomenal. <sighs> Jesus, what a story! I but mean, of course, <sighs> it's kind of it's kind of depressing to me that it's only become a huge story once it affected journalists. Yeah, typical, yeah. isn't it? It's like GamerGate. Yeah. As soon as you attack yeah. the journalist, now now we got a story, man. So yeah, Uber has always been pretty aggressive, and I think in some regard, this is this is just kind of a peek inside the the startup culture, which can tend to be. A, not only a boys club, but an agro, agro boys club, you know, really obnoxious. Uh, obnoxious. Um, and, you know, little bits leak through the programmer and all of that stuff. But really, and I'm not familiar with it because I don't hang out with VCs or with startups or anything. Uh, maybe, Jeff, you I think you do a little bit more. Gina, you're in a startup. Um, is, is this kind of aggressive culture that we're seeing here with Uber kind of typical? It's, well, you know, Uber's just like the darling you know of the valley and there is this whole sort of like undercurrent of like growth hacking and you know hustle and this sort of i don't know this idea that you just stop at nothing to to succeed uh and you know the uberization of everything i mean uber has become this weird synonym for me i feel like it's a synonym for either like the future of technology and convenience or 
complete, you know, uh, or, or a company that treats its, its drivers um, terribly and, and resorts to unethical tactics to acquire customers. I mean, it's like it's this very weird split, um, you know, double thing, double edged sword with, with Uber. When f Uber has raised more money probably than any startup in uh, current uh, Silicon Valley startup. It's uh, one point five billion dollars in uh, six rounds from 32 investors, including several hundred million dollars from Google Ventures. Founded by uh, Travis Kalanick and Garrett Camp, we should explain for those who don't know. Although I imagine most of our audience does, it's uh, it's uh, a, a cab service in effect. A black car well, originally it was a black car service. The thing that made it different was instead of phoning them up and saying "pick me up, uh, I'm ready to go," you'd have an app on your phone, and it was actually very a very lovely experience. The app would already have your credit card information. You tap it, says, say, I want to ride. You could see how far away the car was. You could see as it approached on a map, you'd see a picture of your driver. Your driver would see a picture of you and where to pick you up. You'd get in the car. You'd go where you wanted to, and then you'd get out of the car, and that'd be it. The tip and the payment all handled by Uber. So it was a very nice friction-free transaction. The early Uber cars were all kind of nice black cars. They've now, then they had Uber X, which is somewhat of a lower-cost service. And I, I think they maybe even go lower than that. So there's a variety of cars that might <laughs> Uber bike, yeah, Uber bike. And then uh, of course they felt uh, got a lot of heat in Washington D.C., in New York City, in Toronto. I think that Toronto's about to make Uber illegal uh, because the taxi taxi services said this is essentially an unlicensed taxi service, and you make us buy medallions and go through a huge regulatory hoops, and you're not doing that to Uber, and uh, and. You know, I don't know whether it's lobbying from the taxi services or uh, sure the yeah, I think it is probably. But the taxi commission, you know, some it's kind of like the Airbnb problems with the hotel commissions. There, it's a new way of doing things, and and there maybe are some concerns. Uh, an Uber car hit an immigrant family in San Francisco uh, a few months ago and killed a six-year-old. There have been reports of uh, alleged reports of sexual um, attacks in Uber cars by Uber drivers. Um, but really the issues that's surfacing now is the aggressive promotion of Uber. First, a couple of months ago, we heard that Uber was going after Lyft by actually getting in Lyft cars and trying to solicit their drivers. Right. Well, uh, it, well, Lyft, Lyft is one of their competitors and they would have, supposedly, they had Uber employees calling in Lyft rides, getting the Lyft drivers to go to pick them up and then canceling, right? Like basically taking away taking away their fares and or getting into these cars and pitching Lyft drivers to move right. over to Uber about all the reasons why Uber was was better for them. Um, you know what's so interesting? The name Uber, which sounds, when at the beginning, it sounded like they're better, they're good. They're, and now it's starting to sound like Deutschland Uber alles. It's like uh, it's, <laughs> the connotations are not as good. So the latest uh, kerfuffle came uh, from a private event that uh, Uber uh, had um, in which uh, their, one of their senior vice presidents uh, for business um, said some things that were pretty appalling. Yeah, ironically, they... This was a they, they... fund to go after journalists. Nobody would know it. Yeah, uh, well, and, and we should explain this. So... So what happened uh, was this was an off-the-record event. Ed Norton, the actor, was there. Ariana Huffington was there. Um, and and this, this Michael Wolf. Nice. Yeah, it was a nice event. Like, they, they're trying to make nice. They know that they're having PR problems, right? So they set up these fancy dinners with all these heavy hitters to, like, make nice and clink glasses and get buddy-buddy because they know that they're having PR problems, like, as a company, right? So this is why they're setting up these dinners, okay? So, like, that's right. just, that's the irony of So this. I don't know the okay. Waverly Inn in New York, but I'm guessing it's a pretty nice... Oh, it's hip. It's hip and nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they asked Michael Wolf of USA Today to go, and he, in turn, invited a date, Ben Smith happens to be editor-in-chief of BuzzFeed to come along with him. And now, now just a little moment here. Michael Wolf, just his background, is tries to be as nasty as he can be all the time. And he went to the Foursquare conference, having nothing to do with, with our app Foursquare, but Foursquare from now Lehman Brothers. And it's all off the record. They make this absolutely clear. And Wolf revealed absolutely everything from the event and created a book called Twilight of the Moguls. So Wolf is no friend of off the record. Wolf invites. It is an off the record yeah. event, though. And he well, says, but, Wolf well, said. But, it, but, but, but the argument is, unless the journalist agrees, right. it ain't off the record. And and Bo Ben Smith, whom I trust on this, 
never heard that it was right. off the record. Mulfin is writing in USA Today, says, I had understood the Uber dinner like other such media meet and greets was off the record. I neglected, however, to tell Smith this. He says, while I might have fairly assumed Smith knew the context, this was my oversight, though surely not Uber's. And you know what? It's everybody's oversight because, as you say, nothing's off the record until it's agreed that it's off the record by both parties. Right. So off the record doesn't mean what you think it means. Uh, I might have thought, too, that as my date, he would have asked if there was an understanding. Oh, Wolf's throwing uh, Smith under the bus here. Yeah, he really is. And again, this is bit, Michael yeah. Wolf, who himself has absolutely flaunted off-the-record rules, who, who wrote an entire book out of out of the Foursquare event, which is clearly off-the-record. Everyone right. knows it's off-the-record. He knew it was off-the-record. And now he's acting holier than thou? Yeah. B.S., Michael. B.S. So Ed Norton was there. He's a friend of the founder. Uh, Shauna Robertson, his wife, a movie producer. Mort Zuckerman, uh, now of the Daily News. Uh, it's interesting that Wolf is naming names at, a, at, a, at an off-the-record event. Private mm -hmm, event, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Bob mm -hmm. Pittman, of, of uh, the CEO of Clear Channel, Ariana Huffington. Chris Hughes, the owner of the New Republic and former Facebooker. It's, Chris might even still be a Facebook. No, I think he left Facebook. He was one of the, found one of the one original founders. One of the founders, founders. yeah. Yeah. And uh, he says a long table, about 40 feet or more. Smith was seated at the far end with Emil Michael, who is Uber's senior vice president for business. Now, Wolf says I was at the other end of the table, so I didn't hear this conversation. But apparently, yeah. so this this is actually additional detail that we haven't read before. Smith. Right. Ariana Huffington just tweeted that she was also at the other end of the, of the table. I didn't hear anything, here. darling. It, well, I wasn't it. there. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about, darling, and I'm going to take an Uber right now. Uh, Smith, <laughs> I don't know why she sounds like Zsa, Zsa but she kind of does. Smith she never says darling. She makes a point of never saying darling. But I know, fine. I know, but she, she should say but, darling. But if you're going to talk well. like that, you should say darling. Um, I knew her when she was Ariana Stasinopoulos, okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, Smith uh, apparently engaged Michael in a discussion of Uber's frequent bad press and came away with a set of quotes, or snippets of quotes, which had Michael saying that Uber, if it wanted to, could investigate journalists, including their personal lives. As Smith represented Michael's conversation, and this was a BuzzFeed posting, Michael's, Michael is the executive at Uber. Michael's angle was directed at Sarah Lacey, the founder and editor of Pando Daily, and Lacey has been critical of Uber and its aggressive, uh, um, aggressive uh, tactics, tactics it's sexist, and so forth. You know, a couple of yeah. sexist uh, uh, promos. <clears throat> and, yeah. I should mention uh, that in the B BuzzFeed article, um, this is the quote. Uh, he, over dinner, uh, he outlined the notion of spending, quote, a million dollars, end quote, to hire four top opposition researchers and four journalists. That team could, he said, help Uber fight back against the press. They'd look into, quote, your personal lives, your families." end quote, and give the media a taste of its own medicine. Michael was particularly focused, this again is the is, is Ben, the BuzzFeed uh, editor-in-chief. Michael was particularly focused on one journalist, Sarah Lacey, the editor of a Pando Daily, a sometimes combative vo voice inside the industry. Lacey, Lacey recently accused Uber of sexism and misogyny. She wrote that she was deleting her Uber app after BuzzFeed reported that Uber appeared to be working with a French escort service. She said, I don't know how many more signals we need. The company simply doesn't respect us or prioritize our safety. At dinner, Michael expressed outrage at Lacey's column and said that women are far more likely to get assaulted by taxi drivers than Uber drivers. This is, this is to me, the sentence that was the most outrageous. He said that he thought yeah. Lacey should be held personally responsible for any woman who follows her lead in deleting Uber and is then sexually assaulted. <laughs> he said also they could, in particular... If they went after her, prove a particular and very specific claim about her personal life. By the way, I don't know, and Ben does not report what that is, and we don't need to talk about that. I don't think that's an issue. Uh, right. He at no point suggested that Uber has actually hired opposition researchers or plans to. He cast as something that would make sense. The company would be justified for doing. Now, Michael did not deny it. He actually issued a state's a statement that said the remarks attributed to me at a private dinner born out of frustration during an informal debate over what I feel is sensationalistic media coverage of the company I'm proud to work for do not reflect my actual views and have no relation to the company's views or approach. They're wrong no matter the circumstance and I regret them. There was a Twitter, uh, Kalanick had a Twitter uh, storm of about 17 tweets in which he apologized. At no point did anybody mention whether Michael would be 
reprimanded or punished or even fired. <clears throat> um, this EO did for, a 14 tweet stream saying that what he said had no representation in the company. We're very sorry. Blah, 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 blah. This is not our company, but, but, but there's just been too many signals now. Well, and then there's this other issue of uh, them. The God view. The God, God view. God view, yep. So you want to talk about that? Which is, yeah, I mean, so, th I mean, this is, when we talk about trust and, and particularly around Google, because it's a show about Google, like, this is, this is what, this is what I was talking about when I said Google has root to culture, right? So, so Uber has this thing called God view, purportedly, allegedly, which means that certain uh, uh, employees of the company, not drivers who are contractors, but employees of the company, particularly executives, have this live map of cars, of Uber cars and people who are in them. And um, they can pretty much track anybody who's going somewhere at any given time. And so there was a there was a medium piece by someone whose name I didn't recognize. I think maybe he's a VC or he's someone of some importance um, who said that, you know, someone uh, that he knew also in the industry was texting him saying, hey, are you in a car on this street and this street? Asking him about his location. And he said, yeah, you know, how do you, how do you know where I am? And she said, well, I'm at this Uber party here in Chicago, and they've got the God view up on the, you know, or they've got this, you know, you, the view of where your car is up on the up on the wall. And you, you should be proud. You've been selected. You, you should yeah. be so, yeah, you should be so uh, proud. You know, you should be delighted that they're Uber showing off this amazing technology where they get to watch you in real time drive around the city in a car, which is like, you know, and this person said, I never gave them any permission to broadcast my location real time. I, you know, this is, so... There's this, you know, there's this, uh, so there's this accusation out there that people have access to your private information mm. and, you know, where you're going and who you're with and, you is know, what time Is it possible of day? that, I mean, I think you're starting to see, there seems to be a pattern, but yeah. maybe the pattern is being, remember Uber has been really uh, fought, vicious, you know, hard against by the taxi commissions. Um, Lyft has been uh, complained a lot about Uber. They're, of course, a direct competitor. And some of their complaints turn out to be kind of maybe not, you know, it doesn't, anyway, there's, there seems to be more to this story than meets the eye. Let's not forget that uh, BuzzFeed uh, is uh, heavily in uh, invested in by Andreessen Horowitz, which also is a Lyft one of the major Lyft investors. It seems like there's more to this story than we're seeing. Well, I think that's going too far. I mean, I think, I think I mean, and Andreessen, somebody, somebody said that to Andreessen, and he said, oh, come on, really? And I agree with him. Like, there's some con conspiracies don't really happen, folks. The world's not that well organized. And I don't believe for a second that the investors behind Lyft said, let's go and let's, 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 let's make sure we get Buzz, BuzzFeed Ben invited to this dinner so they can feed Pando more bad stuff so that it just doesn't. Uh, yeah. And. Uh, Buzzfeed. But the bad guys here are Uber. Uber has stop. not denied that Michael said those things, right? Yeah, no, I mean, all I, you got to do I, is I, give this guy half a bottle of wine. I mean, it doesn't take much, right? Like, I mean, really. Like, I, I don't mean to. <laughs> so are you, okay. So let me ask you. See, it's not an issue for me because I can't use Uber in Petaluma. Uh, John Hodgman, whom we respect a lot, said, I'm going to delete my Uber app. Are you going to delete your Uber app? My Uber app is deleted. I have emailed help and asked them to delete my account because just deleting the app from your phone does not actually close your account. Uh, and there's no way to close your account on the Uber website. You actually have to email them. And a human being from Uber wrote back and said she'd be happy to delete my account. But she wanted to know why first. So I responded huh. and said that I do not trust Uber with my data. And could she please close my account? I have yet to hear from her. This uh, I did this about, oh, about 24 hours ago. So uh, I'm already annoyed oh that there isn't a self-service, just close my account. I feel very strongly that that is like, you know, giving, giving a customer an exit route is, you know, responsibility zero for, for a, a service like this. You know, they do store my credit card. I should be able to say, hey, delete my stuff. Uh, but, you know, I, that's, so that's where I'm at with it. I'm waiting for, for them to get back and say, yeah, I'm deleting your account. I live in New York City. We're getting a car service. I mean, when you live in Brooklyn, you, there, there aren't like yellow taxi cabs that, that drive the streets of Brooklyn. But I grew up, you know, even as a teenager, there's car, there's car service, which are these little, you know, <laughs> storefront deals uh, where you call. Yes, I have to make a voice call, which is inconvenient. But you call and then they come and get you. And it costs a few bucks. And it's like not... It's it's not that big a deal. So I plan to use you know car service and public transportation and and yellow taxi cabs for now because I I just I was I wasn't really a big Uber user to begin with. I know it's a big deal in, in the San Francisco area because getting a taxi is apparently very difficult. Um, but uh, you know the app experience is nice. But there's a service here called Carmel which has an app that's not as nice as Uber, but 
is close and that you can hail, hail a car that way. So I do that from the airport. So yeah, I'm done. I'm done with Uber. I, I downloaded Lyft today and I uh, will probably not use Uber. And I think that what they've done is fairly disgusting. Uh, yeah, add it all up. They also went after uh, investors in Lyft and um, it's just the culture, right? My favorite, favorite line of the, of the, of the whole thing came from in response to a tweet of mine, Richard Dunham said, Google is changing its motto to don't be Uber. <laughs> I should point out that Google is a little bit in bed with Uber because the uh, Google Maps app. They invested. They invest, not only they invest hundreds of millions of dollars, the Google Maps app, uh, if you have Uber installed on your uh, phone, will, uh, as one of the, give you a chance to call a cat, call an Uber. And that well, I think, I think really that all the, the major investors. Sorry, Gina. No, I, I, that made me super uncomfortable when they did that. I, I remember doing that in the change log and feeling like, wait, whoa, whoa Uber? Ugh. I felt kind of icky about Uber. Even anyway. then. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, you know, it's an interesting thing to me. Like, what what responsibility? And, and you know, look, we, we've we've had our outrage moments on this show uh, um, about a lot of different things. There are times when apologies work and I accept them and, and I move on. And there are times that they don't. To me, Travis's, Kalanick's uh, ap apology did, just didn't didn't work for me. Uh, the apology that would have worked was would have been uh, emails fired immediately, you know, immediately for for what happened. Case closed. They didn't do that, and I feel like all of these things, you know, put together, just indicate this like really horrible, you know, company culture, and I just I just can't support it. So, look, I I believe that people make mistakes and and can and can change. Um, I've made mistakes and I've apologized. Uh, but in this case, mm, just just wasn't enough. So yeah, that that's why that's why I'm done with Uber. Yeah, and and and, and I think now we have to look to to um, Matt Kohler, Bill Gurley, uh, the Tim investors. Ferriss. These are people who are on the board, so oh, they the board. are the CEO's boss. And are they going to hold the CEO uh, accountable here? Let's let's list their names: Ted Mizell, Matt Kohler, Steve Jang, I guess, Bill Gurley, Timothy Ferris, Paul Brigiel. Stephen, Steve Russell, and Oscar Salazar. These, that's the board of Uber. Those are the real ultimate bosses. And one way or the other, they've, I've, I was on the board of a company when we had some issues, and, and, and at the end of the day, it's up to the board to say what's what, and we've got to see how they do. You know, and there's another story here, too, which is the, is, is the journalistic story. I, I just finished reading, you know, Wolf throwing, ben, Michael Wolf, of all people, throwing BuzzFeed. Ben he really the throws him under the bus, bar. yeah. Really, really does. And and we have another story that was like this recently when when the Guardian went and and went with a, in a business meeting with Whisper, and found out that Whisper was not really keeping things as private as it seemed and seemed to be playing with people's privacy and, and identity in a lot of ways, and reported that. And some journalists, in that case as in this case, kind of got mad and said, "Oh, you're you're ruining the game. You're ruining the rules. You're off the record." And my response to that is. That as a journalist, your first responsibility, full stop, is to the public you serve. And access journalism is corrupting. And gee, you won't get back, invited back for the Waverly dinner, uh, or gee, you won't get invited by the Silicon Valley company to do a deal with them. Well, fine, fine. It's your job to protect the public. And if you know something bad is going on, even those people who were at the dinner knowing it was off the record, I think that there's some level at which it becomes over the top and to say, I'm telling you this off the record, but I, 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 feel, I feel a need to tell people about this. And I certainly as hell would have called Sarah Lacey and, and told her what was going on. This was shameful. And I'm ashamed of people in my business that they don't keep their priorities straight in both these stories. And, and well, I, there is this pattern of stories. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. And as Sarah Lacey points out, Uber's uh, strategies, you let the news cycle fade and then you move on and you don't change. Right. I mean, I think Sarah Lacey's right. piece was a bit over the top, but I understand why it was because they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, talking about going after her personally and the way that no, nobody will know it's us and, and attacking her. She points and, out they ran a promotion in France that promises to pair Uber riders with hot chicks. Yeah, that was that was the the piece on the the, the piece on sexism and misogyny that she wrote that Michael was apparently complaining about right. at that dinner. Um, so that's what kind of pissed him off, right? And, th and so then she wrote her... So Ben called uh, Lacey for comment before he published his story. And yeah, her, she, and she wrote a piece about that. And um, she seemed... I, look, I don't know what... Like, we're not going to discuss whatever thing it is that Michael was saying he knew and was going to reveal about her. I have no idea. But she was clearly shaken up oh, and afraid for terrible. her kids. Oh, that's awful. Um, 
her young kids and 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 so yes her peace was was clearly she was cl- there was a clearly, threat yeah she That's she threat. felt threatened she felt vulnerable and and you could tell um what is and, going uh, on we are in the middle of the worst bro culture well well let's let's go to bill cosby <laughs> <laughs> that story. Um, that's been a lot, but that's gone on for decades. That's on for, well, Ta-Nehisi Coates, uh, who, by the way, is on the faculty at CUNY, is, a, is an honored colleague of mine, wrote a really, really good essay today in The Atlantic, which is redundant in his case because all his essays are really good. But saying that he covered Cosby, he covered, followed him for two years as he was doing kind of the shaming of of, of, of lesser cultural acts back in the day. And, and, and he knew this stuff was going on back then, but he chose not to deal with it because then I'd have to deal with that whole thing and and so on and so forth. Mark Whitaker wrote the biography, chose not to touch it at all. And ta said today that he's had few regrets in his careers, but this is one, because in the end of the day, you had to believe one person over 13 people. And and he says, I should have dealt with it. And it was it was eloquent. And I think that, yes, you get you get Gian Gameshi uh, at CBC. That's a an, somebody I knew and that was a fan of. Um, you get all these BBC men uh, who've been accused of doing bad things with their public position. Um, there's, there's, yeah, it's a, it's a big, bad bro problem here for us men. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's really I really, sad. I thought we were making such great strides. I thought so too. Well, it's really, it's, it's funny. Sad. I really, I go back and forth about this. Uh, you know, on one hand I'm like, yeah, wow. You know, like we're, the, the, we're making no progress. This is terrible. Right. But then it's like, well, maybe I just know about it more because of the internet. Maybe. Like, yeah, maybe. And maybe the system's working. I mean, what did what did um oh, what was his name? Uh, the comedian that did the Hannibal was it Hannibal? The the comedian that did the bit about Cosby. You know, he 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 calls him out during his bit, which is you know which is the thing that kind of got the momentum. But what did he say during his bit? He said, "Go home and Google Cosby rape. You'll see I'm right." Yeah. Like that's how he backed up his claim. You know that these 13 women had, or I think like 15 now, had accused him. So on one hand. When I'm my more depressed moments, I think, yes, we have this huge sexism problem. Nothing is changing. This is just, you know, getting worse and worse. And then at other times I think, you know what? The system's working. People are getting called out. You know, transparency. We're learning more. We're talking more. We're having this conversation. We're identifying patterns because we have, you know, a lot more information and a lot more conversation about it. And that's how how we make progress. So, I don't know. I I, I try to be trying to be an optimist about it. I mean, look, his show got canceled. (laughs) <laughs> right, both yeah, shows, the Netflix here. special and the and the NBC show. But you know, in, in all seriousness, um, this is why you need don't be evil. You need to empower your employees to say, call you out on it, and 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 be licensed to say, should we do that? What about the uh, fact the chat room is bringing this up that uh, the system also allows a lot of false uh, accusations and allegations that gain the power of. Uh, truth just because they've been published on the internet or on Twitter. Yeah. But don't, do we have a system for really being, uh, you know, really de- determining what's true and what's not? Vetting what's true and what's not. Well, I think over the long run, we kind of do. I think, I think that's the point is that, is that, is that the truth will out. Uh, generally, can people be, be, as we've talked about this show many, many times, can people be attacked, uh, impersonated, uh, hounded? Uh, uh, yeah, all kinds of bad things can happen. Uh, but I think Gina's right. We have a better system for more checks now and for more truth to come out. And for and and we and we have tools that empower more people to do that vetting, to do that checking, than we ever have before. Um, and it was kind of what I was saying a couple of weeks ago. You know, technology isn't you know is inherently good or evil. It just is, right? I mean, it's just it's just tools. But yeah, I mean, I ha- I have to believe that the truth will come out. If people care enough, you know, uh, eventually. I mean, look, I was outraged that there were that many cause. I had no idea that these accusations were, were, were against Cosby until, you know, until this 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 guy did this bit, right? I'm I'm thrilled that he that he spoke out about it and 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 used his platform and that it and that it, it gained steam and and this is what's going on. I mean, look, I you know, I don't want to crucify anybody, but this is this this is what happened. This is they why I'm Jeff. You're doing the work of the angels because we need. I think what we need is journalists who are really high integrity journalists who will dig, who will try to, I mean, isn't that what the, originally what this whole point of, maybe actually isn't what originally journalism was about, but at some point, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the modern era, journalism started to become about uh, people trying to find the objective facts, the objective truth, and giving that information to people so they could make judgments. We've, we've fallen far from that uh, lofty goal. 
I don't know. What do you think, Mr. Professor of Journalism? Isn't that what it's what good journal? You see, I mean, originally journalism was yellow journalism, right? It was. It was always until very recently, journalism was about arguing a, a well, a mass position. journalism. Yeah, I mean, I mean back uh, before sixteen oh five. Pardon me for this Gutenberg moment. Uh, journalism was was private information with made public. With, uh, <laughs> well, not made public, paid for. Right. Um, and. Uh, uh, and then it took from 1605 until the steam press in, in the 19th century before it became mass. Once right. it became mass, I, 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 the idea I keep playing around with lately, and I, and I, I had lunch with my, my old editor today and made me start thinking about this again, is I want to play with the idea of the end of mass. And that, and that yeah. I gave a talk at something called Newsgeist in Phoenix this weekend, which was a great um, uh, unconference for my business. And I think that the root of a lot of the problems that we have now in media is the reliance on mass. Not just, uh, and I don't say that as a snob, I say that because it's a business problem. It's corrupting. You go after page views, you go after traffic, you go after a volume. And a volume-based business, journalism as a volume-based business, is inherently corrupted. Um, uh, but I think that journalism as a service-based business uh, isn't. And we see some hope there. We see uh, Chartbeat is working with the FT now to sell attention minutes. And and Tony Hale, the CEO of Chartbeat, who's somebody we ought to have on at some point, uh, uh, is quite eloquent on this, on, on how attention can be a better measure of quality. That's what Medium and Ev Williams are going after. They're selling TTR, Total Time Red. Uh, they believe in that. It's not the only way to get us. You know, Just time spent is not necessarily um, a great measure. But there are some efforts to, to flee to quality here. And, and I think that as we flee away from mass media economics... Uh, we may get better, but as long as we stay with mass media economics, it just stays pure volume. Uh, in other words, promotes clickbait and uh, yeah. sensationalism. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, and uh, and what we what we would somehow like to I would somehow like to promote is a uh, uh, maybe the, they used to call it investigative journalistic class of people who who feel like uh, who have kind of a calling, a higher calling to ferreting out the truth. You know, the Woodward and Bernstein. Uh, and because that's this is the problem. We don't uh, these allegations fly back and forth. You can get a feeling. I mean, we all have a feeling about Uber that doesn't feel good. It feels like right. there's something wrong, but we don't really know. That's true. But do we trust the press to get it for us? Right. So, so well, so, we don't anymore. I mean, BuzzFeed well, is I the trust press BuzzFeed now. Ben. I, I trust Ben Smith. Do you watch out for us? First. You know, you probably know him, right? Well, yeah, madam, and and I think listen, BuzzFeed. I'm very critical of BuzzFeed as as a last vestige of mass clickbait, but the journalism. But at the same time, BuzzFeed does very good journalism, and, and Ben Smith does as well. And 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 you know, cats are the new classifieds that subsidize what uh, the good journalists at BuzzFeed do. Yeah, I, I, I just I'm I'm going to have a hard time trusting BuzzFeed as a journalistic source or vice I, I, I or any agree. of these other so-called journalistic sources that are driven by cats. I generally absolutely agree, and I think that's that's a corrupting problem, and it's what I said in my book. Um, but uh, but then again, I think Smith himself is a good journalist, and and in this yeah, case, and Vice too. Both Buzzfeed and Vice, Vice. do do some good journalism, but it's intermingled with crap. And I well, have Vice, a hard Vice time. I actually think less so. Vice, I think less so. I think Vice, and by the way, full disclosure is on December first at CUNY, where we are giving the Knight Innovation Award uh, in journalism to Shane Smith of Vice. Well. There you go. There you go. There you go. I think there I is. think Vice is Thomas, re maybe Tina, Vice has reinvented apart. itself. You know, I think uh, yes, Vice it has. is very. Yeah. It's a different. The Vice of today is very different than the Vice. The Vice of today is doing some really amazing reporting and proving that young people care about their. Work. Yeah, I mean that's Even clearly David what they're Carr. doing is they're trying to bring young people to real journalist, journalistic. No, David Carr who smashed them. Then, then did a mea culpa and said, no, Vice is actually okay. Yeah. Uh, BuzzFeed, I generally agree with you, though. There is some good stuff there. Uh, 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 Vox, which I think is, is wonderful, where I think it goes astray is that it's, it's still going after some volume page views when it should be trying to explain things, but the business model isn't there yet. Well, isn't uh, that kind of the basic problem, um, that there is no money in the kind of journalism that I'm asking for? Or is there? Is there a way to do true investigative, uh, you know, high integrity journalism? Oh, well, there is. And make there a is. living? Yeah, there is. 
uh, but not in the way that it was done before, where right. you had, you know, you had Pierre Omidyar. His first reflex was to say, "Well, I need a sports section to get audience to my investigative journalism." No, no, that's the wrong old model, right. and, he's, and he's not doing that now. He's trying to um, uh, figure out how to do this, and there's and, and 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 we're not there in the business models yet at all. But no, I I definitely think it's possible. I just am, I think I'm an I'm a um, I'm just old fashioned because I mean I, I you know if you go to the top of uh, Vice's page, really great deep investigative and important stories and and then as you scroll down they they they've got a lot of sugar in here to uh to get you to again the young people particularly to uh to read it and um yeah it's like broccoli wrapped in cotton candy, can right? swimming dolphins with dolphins really cure your meth addiction why do swedish students love yelling so much yeah. um you know uh put your hands in the air for world toilet day in my day you wouldn't see this mixed in with good journalism, but maybe I just I have to get over I that. I agree. Well, the, the other one, the one that bothers me most, actually, which starts with very good motives, but ends up being very cynical as Upworthy. Highly manipulative. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not going to read Upworthy for news. Well, they're trying to get young people to do just that because they're trying to, you know, mm. this, this will change your life. And once you know it doesn't change your life, you, you don't believe them anymore. By the way, Vice has an article, All the Reasons Why Uber is the Worst. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's a listicle linking to all the critical journalism right. that others have done elsewhere. Right. Is that what uh, it is? Right next to the human billboards of New York City. But, okay. Um, I mean, you know, this is this is interesting. I mean, part of it is the rise of kind of social media, the fact that people go to Facebook, their Facebook news feed and their Twitter home timeline to get their news. So they cop from thing to thing. I think Twit is so interesting to me, Leo, because you do you do long shows that do in-depth discussions like the one that we're having now. Um, I mean, because it's, you know, I think your audience is primarily the the audio listeners, right, from, from down, downloading the podcast. They're typically commuters or folks in the gym, you know, people who aren't in a position where they can hop from, you know, one listicle to another, one upworthy curiosity gap headline from another on their, their newsfeed, right? But, but you kind of get this in-depth con content. I, I mean, I love that you are sort of, you're living your values um, by doing the shows the way that you do them. But I know that, you know, you, when we've had this discussion, you know, how, how does video or podcast go viral? They don't, right? There's, right. there's a lot, there's, there isn't a virality that can happen in this sort of medium. Um, there's an in-depthness that, that can happen. And I, I don't really know what the answer is. I mean, if, if you're an advertising-based business, by its nature, has to go after as many eyeballs as possible in order to support itself, right? So it has to be free, and it has to get it. It has to attract. It has to involve kitten listicles. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> really, really, it has to. It has. To. I mean, does it? I, I, you, I know, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I, I often think it's just a matter of time before I'm going to have to retire because I've the world has left me behind, and maybe no, I'm just too old for this. No. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't mean for it to go there. I was. I was congratulating you on on, on good, doing good work, the, the in depth. Good content. work, Gina. You're I, really I retire. I really need big good, listicles. Gina. That's what we need. Big listicles. <laughs> Kitten listicles. Kitten listicles. <laughs> if you did this week in cats. You would get two weeks traffic, and then everyone would yell at you and abandon you. Yeah, and, no, I and know. The point is, you have a relationship of trust with your audience. They're more of an than an audience. They're your friends. But, they're your community. Yeah, that's the future. And you have a super engaged audience. I mean, look at I can't keep up with the with, with the chat room while we while we talk. I know. <laughs> I mean, this is like live live audience. It's it's amazing. It's amazing what goes on here. When I explain this to people who don't who don't watch live, they're like, "Oh, that's crazy." Somebody in the Hundreds chat room saying, "I didn't realize there was video. This is the first time I've ever seen video of Twig." <laughs> and it doesn't Gina look adorable in her uh, furred hoodie? Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's cold here, you guys. It's cold, and I'm I'm frightened and scared because Leo's retiring. No, I'm not. I'm not. I do that to scare the kids. Um, you shop at, uh, at Uniqlo, Gina. Uh, I, ha I, I ha I've actually resisted. I've resisted it because uh, oh, it, it. So this is. It, I, I see. There's one. Uh, there's one as I drive to the airport in San Francisco. It's a what? It's a Chinese. No, it's Japanese, Japanese. and it's like the IKEA of clothes. Uh, I, yeah, I love like Uniqlo. Colors really? You love just... Uniqlo? I love Uniqlo. It's uh, U-N-I-Q-L-O.com if you want to. Um... It's phenomenal. It's just amazing. And they have they have $20 hoodies and, and, and fleeces, and they have a fuzzy hoodie. It is like Ikea. Hoodie. Yeah. But you great. don't wear this I, stuff, I do you? Cool, I, yeah, I do. I do. I wear the incredibly light. Um, they, they have an unbelievably light 
uh, 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 fleece. The, is that the heat tech? No, that's different. It's, that supposedly, as you sweat, warms you up. I, I don't know. Sure. I don't like that idea. It's good layering, uh, like basic it is, layering it yeah. material. It's for cold. <laughs> okay. I got. I got. Yeah, I got to go check this out. I, I've, yeah, I've seen it. There's one of the like one the Atlantic seven. They have a really nice fuzzy hoodie there. You'll love Gina. Yeah, I see. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, look at this. Can't resist. A, can't resist a good fuzzy mm, hoodie. Outerwear outperforms the cold. Yeah. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now this is sexy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stretch down jacket. Oh. Dave Puff marshmallow. Listen, whatever I love takes. those marshmallow jackets. I uh, hat hair. I'll do the whole thing. Yeah. Red nose. I don't care. You don't as appreciate them we... until you're in the in the cold, and then you go, "Wow." Yeah. These are great. Yeah. So, Leo, uh, what about you and Uber? Uh, well, like I said, I don't, I'm not. I've only ridden Uber twice. It was in Paris. The second time, I was cheated by the driver who said, oh, "I don't know. The application is crashed. I don't know how much you owe me." Ooh. I said, "Well, what should I pay you?" Oh, fifty euros. <laughs> I was ripped off by so. Oh, wait, that's I the last. You didn't pay. Don't you just? Doesn't it just charge you? Is it supposed to just charge you? Yeah, yeah. but the app had crashed. He said. Ah. It's he, France. You don't expect Uber to work in France, do you? In Paris. You. He snowed you. He snowed me. And what I, I what am I going to do? I'm not. I can't. Well, I'm not going to pay you. I didn't want to do right. that. So I just gave. Right. I threw fifty euros at him and ran. In France, I can see if it was there was a language issue, which there would be for me. I could see how using an app would be a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, than money changing hands. Uber had just come to Paris. This was at Le Web. And and so we don't have Uber up here. Although uh, I think Jennifer uses Uber a lot. Uh, I think there are. I know people who use Uber a lot. I guess when they go to San Francisco. Do you use it, Jason? In, in San Francisco? No, I've never used Uber. Yeah, although to, I will say we had uh, Phil Nickinson and Matteo Doni on All About Android a couple they, of weeks ago, they and they came, came and yeah. went back using Uber. Yeah. They were able to get Uber uh, here in Sonoma. Yeah, <laughs> you can. Well, you can. You press the button and it says. Well, there'll be an Uber car there in an hour and a half. Hey, yeah, they waited ten minutes. It was really? here pretty fast. Oh, maybe wow. it's here now. Yeah. Well, I ain't, no, I'm, uh, but I don't, I don't want to take Lyft either. That looks weird. So. At that mustache thing. I don't want a pink yeah. mustache on my car. It's not, not really my vibe. I like yellow cabs. <laughs> I don't. I just like a yellow cab. That's all I want. Just a yellow cab. Although at some point they installed screens that uh, in yellow cabs oh, here in, 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 and they in talk at you. Oh, like, Hi, this is Mayo Michael Bloomberg, and welcome. And and like, and yeah, yeah, and it's the worst touch screen ever, and you have to like jab at it to turn it off yeah, yeah. a million times. That was a great episode of The Good Wife from like a season ago. I'm catching up on when when uh, uh, our De Blasio wouldn't shut up in the cab. Yes, I remember that one. I remember that one. And in fact, Uber was just on the last episode without giving anything away. I know you're watching it now, but there was an Uber mention on the last uh, episode of The Good Wife, which is a fantastic, fantastic show just t in terms of technology references. Um, but yeah, there was a moment where they were like, did you take a cab? He said, yeah, I took an Uber. And they were like, give me your phone. We want to see the route you took. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh. The good wife seems to be really up on all of the latest uh, issues of privacy and so forth. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a great I show. Yeah. I mean, it. there's, there's a fake Google chum hum is the name of the search engine, uh, in the, <laughs> in the show. And there's this ongoing case of like chum hum, you know, chum -hum. whatever, using, being a monopoly, basically using their powers to rank results in the search engine unfairly. Oh, Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, oh. they rip case. They, they rip, you know, situations directly from the news. Tony Wang well, last, has just last season was the last season. Season before, like his last season was the uh, the NSA snoops. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Do you, you watch it, Leo? No, I've never seen it. I have. I have. I I, I thought that I I gave up on it because I I missed like the first six episodes. I thought, well, I'll never catch up. I'm now binge watching. Uh, last season to this season, and then from the beginning. I'm going to watch the whole damn thing. Oh, it's, I intentionally yeah. miss episodes because I want to binge watch everything. I don't want to. It's great. Yeah, I, yeah I, highly, I, highly I, recommend. And one of the way. NSA snoops was is the guy who plays Jared in Silicon Valley on HBO. Yeah. It, oh. it, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. He is also uh, one of the voices in um, uh, Big Hero 6. Is it Jared? It's the it's the guy with the funny, weird beard. Oh, no. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Jared was the was the business manager guy, the guy that got stuck yeah, yeah. out on the barge. Love or him. Not the barge, but Love the, him. Yeah, the barge. Yeah, no. he's great. He's yeah, also in uh, in that um, in the loop, that wonderful movie based on in the thick of it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Where are we going here? We're going to yeah, take a break, sorry. so Jeff can go answer the door. 
He has been told his Nexus 6 is on the truck. I keep on refreshing. It's like it's like refreshing. Do I have a new operating system? Refreshing. Do I have a new phone? And uh, thanks to Tony Wang, I am going to have a uh, a uh, a tool of the week this week that comes from Uniqlo. Oh, how, how do you like that? How do you like them apples? That's a little later that. on. Um, yeah, you know it's weird because Jason Howell. Uh, host of All About Android and our producer today yes. um, was the guy who was refreshing like right and left, right and right, right left on the day that the Nexus 6 went uh, online and available and was got in in the first 30 seconds and bought one. So you got it sooner than anybody else. I, some weeks later, learned that every Wednesday they'd put a few more on sale and I was able to snag one on the Play Store but Jeff, where did you get yours? Motorola. Motorola. Ah, uh, okay, yes. Two, two Twig fans on 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 Twitter. Alert, God bless you both. Alerted me. I went on. I seem to have bought it at the very end. Oh, that item in your check in your in your in your what did you call it? Cart is no longer for sale. Uh. So I just refreshed. Then I had two, and I tried to delete the right one, and boom, I had it, and it's on a truck. It's on. It's in New Jersey. It's in New Jersey. So of all, it's odd because Jeff ordered it the most recently, and he's going to get his. First. He's going to get, get his. Soonest. You're going to get Mine's yours. Mine's on its way. It's yours was Illinois. ordered a week after mine. Mine. I was. I was there at the front gates, and I got in, and I'm waiting. It hasn't even shipped. I'm yet. just saying. There's there's just, just no the rhyme or reason here. <laughs> and mine shipped from China. Mine shipped from Lexington, Kentucky. Ah. Huh. Oddly enough, it's all. Go they're all coming on UPS, right? No, yours is FedEx. No FedEx. Mine's UPS. And Jason's ships on Thursday. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced mine's never coming. Then mine's just never going to come. It's so weird. Yeah, mine, mine came from Shenzhen. T-Mobile has it now as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody has it. Uh, well, don't worry. Everybody I'm has starting it. To, uh, I'm starting to, you know, we had Kevin Toffel on last week. He had his. I'm starting to hear that the battery life, like on all yeah. these QHD displays, these quad HD displays, is not the greatest. Really? Stick with boy, your OnePlus you know, One. Uh, this the OnePlus One battery life really is. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. It's, it is it's just awesome. phenomenal. I, I think we one. have a clear winner in battery life, and it's OnePlus One. Oh, boy, do we. It's, it sets the standard for battery it's life. It's because it's a 1080p screen. If if any of these big screen guys were 1080p, it'd be fine. But they decided, well, we got more battery. Let's uh, Let's throw more pixels at it. More power, more power. And I'm curious if Lollipop's right. going to make that better or not. I mean, theory, Lollipop does, but I'm curious. Speaking yeah, of Lollipop, theory. did either of you get it on your Nexus 7? Nope. 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 I I dug up my my Nexus 7, which is the original Nexus 7. So, and I, and I just, I hadn't looked at it in a while. That thing is just slow. Like, it's just <laughs> slow. It had a ton of updates to get through, but it's stuttery and slow. And well, you I, know what I did? I put mine in my briefcase next to a magnet. Yeah. And it. It ruins oh. the pixels. No. Oh, yeah. no. And I love this thing so I know. much. I ordered another one before they go yeah. out of stock. I have my second generation here. I brought it in, kept keeping it charged on wireless. I love cheat charging, by the way. You got to love that. And uh, so just sitting on the on the dock there. And every once in a while, I check. We, we know now, though, thanks to a uh, post on Reddit by a Google engineer, the story of the updates. And I will tell you. The story of the updates when we come back. Why you are getting an update, but you aren't, and so forth and so on. Ah. Yeah. We now know the truth about all of this. But first, a word from our friends at Smart Things. Smart Things was a wonderful Kickstarter project to create a hub uh, for your smart home that would understand everything you have in the smart home and allow you to set up a, a, a smart automated system without a lot of muss and fuss to give you home security, to uh, allow you to control things like your lights and your music. Smart Things is so cool. Get a notification if someone you don't know tries to enter your house or get an alert to prevent a small leak from becoming a major flood. Yes, they have moisture sensors. Control and automate your lights and your small appliances wherever you go. Stay connected to your family by getting notifications of when people come and go and protect valuable items and secure areas that are off limits. Smart Things is so cool. And of course, you control it all with a mobile app on your iPhone or your Android device. They have a huge number of sensors, but it all starts with the uh, the hub, the Smart Things hub. 
In fact, a great way to start is to work with the uh, kits that they offer. They have a variety of uh, kits available, uh, security kits, uh, but also kits designed to get things done, like the water detection kit I mentioned, which has the sensors that will detect moisture. You can get instant push or text notifications whenever moisture is found in a, in a particular area, a basement, a stairwell, a laundry room. You can monitor temperatures if you're worried about the pipes freezing in your cabin or your Brooklyn home. You can have, uh, you can have notifications there. And this is the nicest thing about smart things. If you've got a Nest thermostat or a, a Honeywell or an Eon, it talks to those too. So you can use the, you know, the smart things uh, hub and the smart things units, but you can also use Dropcam, Sonos, the Philips Hue, Logitech, and of course your Nest, Nest thermostat. Furthermore, if you're a developer, you can also create new ways to use smart things and publish them for everyone else to use. It works with if, then, then that. I, it, I can just go on and on. It works with your Schlage locks, your quick set locks, your train heating system, your Sonos, your Foscam, your Belkin, with your Y things. <laughs> now, we've got solution kits starting at $170 for Twit fans. Home security kits starting at $350. Each of them, of course, starts with the hub and then has the devices you need to add additional capabilities. You'll be getting a smart home in less than 15 minutes, plus free shipping within the U.S. Smartthings.com slash twit. And the deal is use the offer code twit10 at checkout to get 10% off any home security or solution kit. Twit10, T-W-I-T-1-0, at checkout, smartthings.com slash twit. I just, it's such a good solution. Did you get your Kickstarter um, reward yet? Uh, didn't you buy it on on the, on the I did. I backed. I backed the Kickstarter. It was a while ago. It was like September. It was like 2012. Oh, so you got a couple it years ago. Yeah, yeah. So I got my kit a long time ago. And in fact, I'm pretty sure the version that I got is is out of date at this point than the one they're shipping. So it was a it was an early. Oh, prototype. it's much. It's so much improved. Yeah. It's yeah. It's awesome. I I I love smart things from from the get go. Um, I had it hooked up. Such I think nice I told idea. you I, I had it hooked up to my uh, my mailbox, my postal mailbox <laughs> outside. <laughs> So when the, the mail got dropped in, I got a push notification on my phone, which was awesome. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great product. I or really when the uh, FedEx guy throws your Nexus 6 over the fence. Exactly. Yeah, then you'll know it's here. Katie has just arrived home from school. This is so cool. So she has in her backpack the little thing that's that's a presence sensor. And yep. you'll get a text message when, you're, when your kids arrive back from school, that kind of thing. It's just so neat. Yeah, I had I had so one on uh, at a neat. stroller, so I knew which yeah. one was out walk. Yeah, uh -huh. it's really it's the coolest thing ever. I don't know what this guy's doing, but <laughs> <laughs> smartthings.com slash twit. Uh, yeah, so the, a good posting by a Google engineer on Reddit kind of cleared up a little bit. You know, so many people, and it's still happening now, were so anxious to get Android 5.0 Lollipop on their uh, Nexus 5, their Nexus 4, their Nexus 7, their Motorola X, that they were downloading the, you know, the jar files and trying to install them. Um, and he, he posted, PSA, do not clear data for Google service framework. He said, <laughs> so a lot of people are doing this, um, apparently, and it just screws everything up. But, but furthermore, explained that here's how these rollouts work. Did I explain this last week? No. I explained it on Twit. Yeah, yeah, on Twit. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. I'm getting old. Um, so what, what he said is 1%. So here's how it works. Um, they've got the new Lollipop 5. It has been tested. The releases are out. They've even released the, the you know, the, the full APK, or I guess it's a jar file, for each of the phones. So if you really, you know, wanted to, you can install it, but don't. What they do first, they roll it out to 1% randomly. And he said, it doesn't matter how much you press refresh. You remember we were wondering last week if actually pressing refresh could screw it up, you know, asking too many times, can I have the update? He said, it doesn't matter. He said, you're either in the on the bus or you're off the bus. If you're on the bus, you're in the 1%, you'll get it. If not, you can refresh as many times as you want. You're not going to get it. And it's not going to make it any worse because... If there are no big, massive bugs, we've heard a couple, but I don't think there are any massive bugs. In the next week, and this is the next week now, I think, 25% will get it. Oh, that's a big jump. Yeah. So now 26% of all owners of Moto X's or Nexus 5's or Nexus 4's probably should have Lollipop or will get it in the next day or so. 
The next jump is another 25% and then the final 25%. So it takes, it's, it's three or four weeks to roll out the whole thing. And there's nothing you can do. You can't force the update. You could sideload it. But it seems to me sideloading causes some issues. So, yeah, and I, I mean, I guess it's I guess one percent is uh, actually quite a few users, and it makes yeah. sense that they would stage the rollout. And honestly, you know, maybe you don't want to be in the in the one percent, the you know, the, right. the canary in the coal mine, the, right. the, the people, you know, right? Because you, with software, you, you really you can test and test and test. This is a lesson I have to learn over and over again. You never see, you don't see the bug, or the bug doesn't happen until actual users get it. Right. Um, and then and then you want to jump off a cliff. So it makes sense that they do one percent. Although yeah. we were saying last night on all about Android, or at least I was saying, you know, I wish that I wish that Google could just detect the people who are manually tapping check now because those are the people who really care and really want it, <laughs> and they could just win so many hearts <laughs> by putting those people on the one percent. You know what I'm saying? Or the first twenty five percent. There there ought to be um, like a, a fans club. That 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 yeah. you, you know, you're, if you're a loyal user, you get you get early early take on it. If I've bought every damn Nexus product there, I have and I have. And if you happen to have written a kiss ass book about the company, and I have, um, you know, you, you, at least at least you get the stuff early. Yeah, like some sort of opt in. Yeah, super fans. Yeah. But it, well, and this is all companies do this. You can be a super fan, you know, if you get in the beta program or whatever. But understand, you're also. You're you're also you know cannon fodder. You're the first one over the hill. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's true. And, right, uh, and maybe they don't want us. You know, they want the a super fan to stay. Platform. Yeah, to stay happy. <laughs> <laughs> to be talking about the buggy uh, yeah. release that they got. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't upgrade to Lollipop. It's really buggy. You know, that's <laughs> it's taking a risk. This one is from Jeff Jarvis. I'm guessing. Et uh, to Google. <laughs> yeah, Google amazing. now joins dumb TV news reports on what we've long known. Thanksgiving holiday traffic. Are they going to have a, somebody standing? What what's it called? A stand outer? A stand in? Oh, right. Stand up? <laughs> stand up? Stand up. A stand up. A stand up. Somebody standing. Well, I'm one standing of in front of I five, and it's a mess. Right. They it's went like through the, the, all this <laughs> magnificent data, and they tell us, guess what? Wednesday has a lot of traffic. <laughs> Thanks, Google. <laughs> but but you got to admit the infographic. Are a lot of people going to shop on the day after Thanksgiving? Why don't you tell me that? The infographic is well done. Right? Uh, but in interestingly, Boston is Tuesday. Honolulu is Saturday. Province, Providence is sa uh, Saturday. And San Francisco is Saturday. So there are exceptions. Yeah, yeah, they're fine, fine, fine. If you must leave on Wednesday, skip the rush. The worst, this is just an infographic exercise. Yeah, that's all it is. It's we actually had fun uh, on Monday. If you get a chance to watch Triangulation, I interviewed Gareth Cook, who's the author of The Best Infographics of 2014. And there's some really good ones. And we talked about bad infographics, clickbait infographics and all of that. But there's some really nice. It can be done well. Uh, good news for local travelers. Thanksgiving Day traffic is a breeze. They have a turkey in a car. <laughs> yeah, the turkey trying to get away from the table. Run, run. Get me the, out of here. It says Thanksgiving Day traffic is a breeze. It usually has the least traffic of the entire week. For traffic gurus looking to best even the lightest traffic days, make sure you stay off the road. Between noon and two on Thanksgiving Day, that's not clear. I don't understand what they're saying. Even the lightest, well, traffic. Tra that is actually that's crappy. Whatever they wrote there, because I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. Stay off the road between noon and two. It's the best day for bad, for good traffic. Hmm. <laughs> let me let me read this again. Thanksgiving Day traffic is a breeze. It usually has the least traffic in the entire week. Semicolon. For the traffic gurus looking to best, even the lightest traffic days, make sure you okay. stay off the road between noon and 2 on Thanksgiving Day. So they're saying on the best day, the worst at two hours are between 12 and 2. Thank you for translating. Right? That's what uh. it sounds like. See, this is the yes. the intelligence. The intelligence that you bring to think up. <laughs> Trying to parse what the hell these people are saying in 140 characters. I don't understand. My, my Basically, my entire full-time job is trying to come up with a sentence that someone would say maybe in conversation <laughs> expressing what a piece of data means. And it's not easy. Hey, are, not you're easy. doing a deal, by the way. We should mention this. Um, What's the oh, yeah. what's the website I should go to? Thank you. It's goodwebbundle.com. We're doing a uh, holiday promotion. ThinkUp got together with uh, four of our favorite sites, Milkshake, Metafilter, 
the toast and news blur. And we're offering something similar to Humble Bundle, not aff- not affiliated with Humble Bundle, but similar to Humble Bundle in that you can buy a, a one-year membership to all of these sites um, in one shot for $96, which sounds like a lot of money. But if you pay for the normal price outside of the bundle, it would be almost $200. So it's about 50% off. Um, and these are just a bunch of sites, you know, given, you know, given the, the Uber story and the, the sort of model of startup that's like super funded and just trying to take over the world using all these, you know, crazy tactics. I think there are still a lot of small businesses on the web that are that are run, you know, through donations and through subscriptions. And I count my company as one of those. So this is one way to support sites like that. And hopefully, you know, one of these sites you've never heard of before, you'll discover something good and. If you buy the bundle, you get a coupon code. You can use it all five sites. And uh, if you already have a membership, you can give it away to a friend. Great gift uh, for your online hero. And uh, yeah, so it's goodwebbundle.com. It's a one-time deal, uh, year's membership to five really great sites. And uh, yeah, thanks, Leo. Thanks for letting me plug it. What's the update on Metafilter? Wasn't 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 Matt going to retire it or something? I mean, what, what happened? Yeah, you know, Meta- Metafilter had... Um, it actually just redesigned. Look how beautiful it looks. It looks oh, amazing. so nice. It needed yeah, this a little bit. It was. It hadn't yeah. changed much in years. It did. Well, you know, Metafilter is a, a really interesting story of like how Google ranking really affects a business. I mean, I mean, Metafilter was running was was actually a, they were a case study for Google AdSense. Like Google Google made them a case study, and there was a pa- the page on Google describing how great Metafilter did in terms of you know running running Google Ads, and uh, you know they made some changes to their algorithm. They started to. Um, de-rank older pages. So Ask Metafilter, for example, is a fantastic resource, resource, but there were threads that were old that were certainly content that was perfectly good, but they, the pages were just old or hadn't been updated in a while and they got de-ranked and their revenue took a big hit. Um, so Matt had to do, a, a, you know, had to had to size down his staff and uh, he did a donation uh, push earlier this year and they got back on their feet and they did this beautiful redesign, which you can see. And I think they even launched a new uh, TV uh, centric meta filter site. Um, but it's doing, it's doing well. It's on it's on stable ground right now. And um, really, yeah, fanfare. That's the that's the new that's the new meta filter site. Uh, all the meta filter sites are great. I mean, this is a site that's been around. I mean, th- th- this Matt was running meta filter on a single box, like underneath his desk <laughs> back when he was working on blogger, like in 19. 19- 99 like this is an old school he's always run it run it independently with us with a staff of moderators um all of these sites you know do read the comments <laughs> that you know none of these sites did, uh tolerate abusive behavior there's fantastic conversations go on here i, I mean just Matt, love Matt is, filter it's been yeah, so good for so great. many it's years a, such a great well moderated fairly moderated um and ardently moderated community it's fantastic so we're really happy that they're in the bundle with us and um they're a fantastic site too to, uh, so you'll be basically buying a, a supporting membership, which is great. Exactly yeah. right. So you get it. So on MetaFilter, each site you get a little something different. On MetaFilter, you get a little, you know, I'm a supporting member badge on your account, uh, so people can see that you help fund the site. And um, yeah, so but but through the bundle, you you uh, you can you can get that at half the the normal suggested donation, yeah. you know, amount for a year. Yeah. Um, so this yeah. Is awesome. And this, the random thing is fun because it's their entire life of MetaFilter. So there's stuff from, yeah, I mean, this gosh, is the year 2000. Around, it's crazy. Fun. It's been around, yeah, 14 years. Jeez, yeah. I, more than that, I think. More than that, yeah. MetaFilter is an amazing, is really sort of amazing case study of like what, you know, a dude who started a first group blog, you know, could do, built, built an entire Love Matt. career and, and business. And I remember yeah. early back, er, earlier days, you know, he, he had existential crises at various points in the life of MetaFilter and, and has kept going on with, with value added. It really is a great story, as you say, yeah. about how you can adapt to these changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he really Matt Matt has an uh, it's been he really has reckoned with some of the hardest Oh. You know, uh, moments. I mean, there, I think there are a few moments of being shut down. He had offers, you know, to get, you know, to be bought, which he never, which he never did. Um, I mean, he is he is the guru on great community, you know, moderation, and yep. he struggled with with ads, and he struggled with dealing with, you know, what what a change to Google's algorithm can do to his business, and and um, and he's really come out on top, and it's an amazing community. It's really old school, amazing community. And you know, I can tell how much I like MetaFilter because unfortunately, I am starting to read the article. It's like, right oh wait, now, I got to read that. Leo. Oh I'm yeah, well, that's you. a good one. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, that's uh, so. If you want to support uh, a lot of really great stuff, the Good Web Bundle uh, would be a great holiday gift. And if you already have a ThinkUp 
uh, subscription as I do, you can give that co that offer code to somebody else. You, could, you can exactly. unbundle the bundle. For right, exactly. Bucks. If you want only want two of the sites, you take the two you want, and you can give yeah. the other the other two away. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And you're supporting some really great sites. I was looking at Milkshake before the show. That's fun. Yeah, Milkshake is really fun. Yeah. Milkshake is one of those undersung heroes. I've never not heard of them. Know about it? Yeah, yeah, you haven't heard about it, right? It's made by a mom, a husband and wife team, Andre and Amber. Um, it's it's just got so much personality and fun. So and, awesome. Uh, it, yeah, it's 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 really well designed. And um, actually, it, it, Andre's at Slack now. Uh, oh, but neat. yeah, there's some great content there, and um, so we're we're really happy to team up with them as well. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh, I don't know. We're losing Leo to milkshake. I, I, I love milk. So milkshake is like people put uh, images up and share them. It's kind of like Pinterest for images, but it's got a yeah, exactly, kind of wicked right? sense you of humor. Yeah, yeah. You create a shake, and uh, it's a it's a it's a stream of images, and and uh, and the community this. that attracted just happens to be really big on animated gifs and and really you know kind of funny, quirky humor, humor humorous I'm, images. I'm, I'm going to buy this bundle because I've already that's three sites now I love. I got it. This is awesome, and I and a great awesome. site for discovery. So our show today brought to you by Prosper. Uh, com. It actually is a great. Uh, this is. Uh, this is Silicon Valley's answer to going into the loan, the bank with a hat in hand for a loan, and you got to put on a tire, and uh, you got to look nice. And Prosper is a way to get money, to borrow money, without doing any of that. It, it's a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace, connecting people who are looking to borrow money with people who have money to lend. It's such a great idea. If you go to prosper.com slash twit right now, uh, you'll be able to uh, fill out a quick application and find out exactly how much money you can get. And what your rate will be. There aren't a, a, a lot of ways to borrow money when you need it. You can, I guess you go to friends and family or a credit card. That's a bad idea. Or go to the bank. But now with a low fixed rate loan from Prosper.com, you can pay off those high rate credit cards. You can fix up your house for the holidays. You can put it into your business or start a business. Borrow up to $35,000 in as few as five days and use the money as you need. These are fixed rate loans, multi-year terms available. No collateral needed. They're personal loans. Prosper is an online marketplace connecting people who need money with those who want to invest. Don't rack up more debt on your credit cards this holiday season. Pay them off with Prosper.com. Check your rate without affecting your good credit. Go to Prosper.com slash twit. And for a limited time, Prosper is offering twit viewers a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. Prosper.com slash twit. That's a special site just for you. Prosper.com slash twit. Up to $35,000 in just five days, plus that $50 Visa prepaid card. It's waiting for you. Prosper.com slash twit. And now it's time for the Google Change Log. The Google Change Log. Here's Gina Trapani with the latest from Google. This is something I'm really excited about. I love Google Keep, a uh, fantastic note-taking app uh, with a fantastic widget, works on Android or the web. Well, one of the most requested features that, that they get for Keep uh, just rolled out. You can now share notes Huge. and collaborate in real time on Keep Notes. This is really awesome, you guys. If you if you need to share a grocery list with your... Bro, that's exactly what I want to use this for. <laughs> yes, exactly. With and your, it checks right. it off as you're in the store buying stuff. Lisa yes. will see that I got it. Exactly. Exactly. Very, very cool stuff. Oh, um, man. You know, I way, way, way back in the day, I worked with a German company that was going to do that on the web. This is going back 1999, and it was always a great idea, and now it's finally done. Yeah, you know, there's, it's like I, I mean, I make a to-do app, and there's like there's tons of apps out there that let you kind of that let you collaborate. And there's there's note-taking apps, and there's and there's list apps. Um, I have to say, I love Keep because it's tied to your Google account. It's really yeah. lightweight. It lets you do. I actually use Evernote and Keep, um, but it's great just for for collaborating without asking somebody. I mean, I guess you do have to download the Keep the, the Keep app, but you you know you don't have to sign up. It's just really really simple and easy and lightweight. Uh, you can add checkboxes, remove checkboxes. Uh, so the sharing collaboration is really really nice. You can also filter your notes by color because uh, you know you can, ch you can change the notes of your color, whether or not they have images or audio, whether or not they're shared. Uh, so it's easier for you to to sort out your notes and see the ones that you're sharing with your with your with your you know business coworkers or or better half or whatever um so really nice and it's got that reminder built in love keep love keep i feel like keep is one of uh google's most undersung pro products actually right you're right 
A couple of other little nice upgrades. Um, Google's search results on mobile now let you know if the site is mobile friendly. Okay, so if you, you do search um, and you get your search results on on uh, you know on your phone on your mobile device, you'll see a little label uh, that says mobile friendly. If the site that it's linking to is is mobile friendly, looks good on your. Does on that a small mean screen. it's a mobile site or it's just if mobile responsive? Would that count? Yeah, I think that response would, so. would count, and I want, and I, I, I would love to know the story behind how they're automatically detecting this. Yeah, uh, sure. actually, um, so yeah, it doesn't appear to be just sites that have like an m, you know, mobile dot whatever dot yeah. com because that's kind of not the modern web anymore. Now that is in the modern web, yeah. right? The modern web is sites that that just that are responsive and just change the screen. It does it does not appear to be that. So, really nice way to kind of choose choose what. Uh, what sites you go through based on whether or not they're going to look look good on your phone. Uh, similar change, uh, weather is now in Google Maps. So I tried this out with a couple of places and got mixed results. I, I searched for London, England, I'm like in the screenshot there, and I didn't see the weather. But then I searched for Brooklyn, New York, and I did get the weather. Anyway, it's a little Google Now style card uh, right below the place you search for. That'll tell you what the That's weather nice. is. There, so I can look at places in California and be jealous of how sunny and gorgeous it is in there while I while I shiver here in, in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was last week that I talked about, or two weeks ago, that I talked about how you, how Google Search on mobile now has you. You can flip a coin, say, "Okay, Google, flip a coin, I'll flip a coin for you." There's a couple of other ones uh, there. I, it didn't work, I think, when we tried it live on the show because we hadn't gotten the, the update yet. It does work for me now, Leo. Probably still does for you does for you as well. Oh, good. There's also roll a die. <laughs> so uh, Google will roll a six-sided die for you. Oh, they will. Oh, good. Uh, they will. Uh, or, oh, not a 20-sided, know. though. I can't. No, no. No. I wonder. I didn't try roll a 20-sided die. Well, we should maybe maybe try that. <laughs> okay, it's six Google. by default. Let me see if we can. Roll a 20-sided die. Hello? Oh, it, it deactivated. Roll a 20... Okay, Google. Oh, shut up. I just My timing is everything. <laughs> Roll a 20-sided die. No. Oh, shoot. so close. I was so sure that was going to work. Roll a die. Maybe, you know, I'm using a Galaxy Note. Maybe that Google's just not up to date on that. I don't know what's going on now. Ooh, it's translating. Thinking. Think. Working. Can't oh, reach Google, can't reach at, the Google moment. at the moment. Whoa. I hate it when that happens. Roll a die. I don't like to say oh. No, it didn't work. You mustn't have gotten the update. Sorry about that. See, I did the same thing I did to you last week. The yeah. other thing that you could do, Game of Thrones fans, just Google Hoder. It'll talk back to you. I love that. Hoder. Is it working Hoder. this week? We tried last week. It didn't work. It, it did. It worked for me this time around. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Well, oh, see, now my watch is listening. Oh, it's so confusing. Help me, Obi-Wan. And then and then the phone is gets gets kind of snarky and says, you shouldn't be talking to me while your watch is listening. Huh. Okay, there you go. Hodor. Hodor, Hodor, Hodor. Hodor, Hodor. <laughs> Love Hodor, and then the yeah. Hodor. Anyway, so I, you know, I'm a sucker for these Easter eggs. These are ways to imp impress uh, your friends and family at Thanksgiving, folks. So there you go, Google tricks. <laughs> oh, no, Google no, tricks I'm for Turkey who, Day. Who's Hodor? What's Hodor? Who, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, Hodor? <laughs> oh, that, that's all I got. And that's the Google change log. Hodor. It's gonna, you know, I think that the that Hodor thing, people aren't gonna know what that means in a few years. Or, or yeah, maybe. that's it's probably a fleeting. Uh, yeah. Do they still have the Klingon? I think they probably still have Google and Klingon. And then that's, that's another that's, one that's, that's just kind of yeah, a nerd, kind of... nerdy fun. Yeah, yeah. Hodor, for those who don't know, is a character in Game of Thrones that can say but one thing, and that thing is Hodor. It's also yeah, his they should, name. They should do it for Groot. Groot, same thing. I Groot. am Groot. I am Groot. That's all he can say. But he says it in such expressive way, you know what he's talking about. By the way, Ingress is two years old. Whoa, time flies. I know. Remember we were all like, I want to get an invite. I want to play Ingress. That's Several wacky. of our staffers play Ingress and, and log miles, miles playing the thing. It's crazy. In fact, here's the infographic. Hypothesis. Google GPS-based game. Cracking the code on healthier lifestyle 
Erblin Exploration and Discovery. 200 plus countries, 64 million resonators deployed. That's part of the game is deploying resonators. 178 million portals visited. That's Are the portals uh, all geographic locations? They must be, right? 52,000 so. event attendants, 127 million kilometers walked. Ingress, as you play it, logs your distance traveled. So that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah, that's, that is pretty great. Good for them. Oh, I get it. Three million portals created, 178 million visited. I'm even more um, overwhelmed by the thought of playing Ingress now than I was two years ago when it was introduced. It's, it seems like a, a world that I just don't yeah. know that I'm willing to commit to. That's what <laughs> happens, you know. True. If you got in at the beginning, yeah. it wouldn't be so. But, you know, Jeff Needles plays it, and he walks miles. Yeah, Padre. Padre plays it. It's really kind of, uh, we, the, at the whole time, we, when we first saw this, we thought, we surmised it was some sort of Google plan to gather location information. In fact, I think it was a Google plan to get everybody walking. <laughs> Love it. Or so they want us to think. Yeah, who knows what they're up to. What was the net effect of the Niantic project? We had crossed a threshold. Well, security could be at risk. Ingress is not Cutting a game. the data was the mistake. Light this is not around. psychosis or some cognitive break, but an actual... So Niantic Labs, which created this, is inside Google, right? Mm -hmm. Is this 20% yes. project, or is this an actual... What is, is this a business? Not only attracts people, but attracts events. I don't know what's going on with my sound. It's kind of... ...to monitor the effects of mind hacking. Obviously, this will be done with the highest of security. To make it's sure really a neat idea. ...contaminate or threaten... This it is. I found it a little too all-consuming to play, but it is all-consuming. People, people love it. Um, I just, I got places to go. I don't, know. I got, I, you know, <laughs> like walk, walking around. Life. Like, I, I just, I couldn't. It, it wasn't, it wasn't my thing, but I totally get it, and I, and I love that people love it. And if and I when, lived you know, in a city walk, like you do, I would really be more likely to use it. The problem, yeah. Is and in fact, I should revisit it now that I'm here in Brooklyn yeah. because I found that being in San Diego, which is not, not nearly the sort of, or the area that I was in, is not nearly as walkable as here. Uh, it was, it was kind of, it was not easy to play. Uh, Don, Dot Get Glass uh, in our chat room uh, points out that Niantic is also the comp or company or the group that did Field Trip. Which, right, that's which right. Which is a similar idea, right. but as Field Trip will give you narration as you wander your town about mm -hmm. sites of interest, which is a great, also a great idea. Yeah, I had to turn off Field Trip in New York because it, it buzzed so much. Yeah. I mean, you know. Every other block was some something, something had been filmed or was some sort of historical. Yeah, there's about five in Petaluma that kept coming up. <laughs> Leo Laporte's here. Leo yeah. Laporte's there. Yeah, Leo no, no. Here. Hey, did you know that uh, Finding the Abbots was shot here in uh, 1987? Relative Wave. Uh, they do a Mac app called Form, an interaction design and prototyping app was just acquired by Google. It's an $80 app design tool, and Google is now going to give it away. Oh. It, that's pretty uh, very interesting uh, news. Mm. I, haven't, what? I haven't used Form. It's for designers and developers. It doesn't make an app, but it lets you design an app. Does that make sense? Ooh. Um, right, so the, so the so the uh, user interface, um, so you can lay out right. your screens and put down your buttons right. and your drop downs, and mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. certainly the first stage to making an app. It just doesn't let you put code in there. Um, it's yes. a, it's a IA, right? Uh, it's IA, right? Yeah. And contrary to popular belief, that's the hardest part. Getting that right is the hardest part. Writing yeah. the code is just filling right. in the blanks. We're doing it right now for our new uh, the, the new Twit website, um, and it oh, is yeah, it's fascinating. Heard. You're, so you're doing you're doing all JavaScript APIs, yeah, and Node, and so the front the front end's gonna be like a client to the to, that consumes the, the JSON. It sounds amazing. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, no, no, sorry, it's true. Yeah. No, it just makes me cry to think of it. Um, yeah. So what we're doing, we are Drupal right now. If you go to twit.tv, it's a Drupal website. Uh, we are not abandoning Drupal. What we're gonna do is what they call headless Drupal. So the Drupal will maintain a MySQL database with all the information about shows and hosts and everything else. But instead of being responsible for display on the screen, as a traditional Drupal site is, Drupal um, is a really robust, nice content management system, but its displays don't look super up-to-date. It's a lot of work to get it to look really cool and neat. 
So the company that we're working with in uh, Austin, they're called Four Kitchens. They suggest, and they've done this for a couple of other companies. The, the Tonight Show uh, website has done this way for uh, NBC. It's headless Drupal. So they still use Drupal, but Drupal is now an API. And one of the consumers, but not the only consumer of the API, is a website that's written in Node.js. So, uh, yeah, just as you said, the, the website is actually just a JavaScript entity that is doing calls to the API saying, okay, well, what's, the, what's this, what shows, what's the name of the show, what's the picture, what's the video, whatever, and putting it up on the website. So it's kind of, I, an, approve. I approve too. It <laughs> feels modern. Idea. It feels yeah, very yeah, modern. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds, and the that reason sounds we good. did this is because we realized that the web is not so important as it used to be. That really, we see our consumers, most of the consumers of our content, doing it on mobile. So what yep. we want to do is have an API that can be consumed by a variety of things. A website's just one. A mobile app would be another. And we're going to make a public API so that if you, you know, you, you'd like to write a little Ruby or Python or something, you'll be able to write a little app uh, if you want because the API is public and freely available. So you'll be able to query... You know, right now there is an API in effect to all podcasts. It's the RSS feed, but this is going to go so much more beyond that. Yeah, that's so limited, right? right? Oh, that's great. That's awesome, Leo. Crazy. In some ways, yeah, designing an API is it can can be can be hard, uh, but but that no, that that that's great. I'm excited, great. and we and I'm really uh, I, 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 they so the four kitchens guys are great, gals and guys are great, um, and and we're doing the internet. So there's two two phases of development. There's the, the API development, the Drupal development. And then there's the UI for the website development. So we're in the middle of the information architecture, the IA for the website right now. With the right, because that, I mean, that's really going to define your API, right? You want to design from it's, the outside it's in. It's a two-way street. So yeah. we also talk to app developers. We also talk, you know, what would an API, what should an API have? In fact, we consume it internally. We have a program we use called Elroy that it, uh, is, that, uh, is the, f the generator of the content and the feeds and stuff. So the editor, when he... F he finishes editing the show. He uh, creates a mezzanine file, which is a high-quality file, which he then f gives Elroy, and he, and he puts all the metadata in Elroy. That's going to start moving to Drupal, but he then feeds that to Elroy, and Elroy churns and makes all the different versions, uploads it to YouTube and the, and the, and the CDN. It posts the feed, creates the feed and posts it, and does all this stuff automatically. So Elroy will also be a consumer of the API. Very so, nice. That's exciting. It seems like the right way to do it. Yeah, sounds sounds good to me. It's one of those sold. things where it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say if you're so, we'll see if we're sold in a year. <laughs> it's definitely the right That's way good. to do it, and it's, it's and modularity. It's, the pro, you know yeah. what? It all came from is that the web moves so fast you can no longer, you, you don't want to do a redesign every six months or a year. It's too expensive. Uh, it, it, it makes a lot of sense to separate the front end from yeah. the back end, right? Yeah. And have clients and yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes sense in my mind. <laughs> uh, is this a news flash? I just got a, saw a tweet that um, uh, Firefox is a, a renewal of Google as as default worldwide search came up, and in the U.S. it's going to be Yahoo Search. Russia yet wow. next? I do. That's a huge story. Wow. And I'll tell you why that's a huge story because Mozilla, the the nonprofit uh, open source foundation that does Firefox makes millions every year from Google, from like Google. So, so tens of millions. Work, I wonder? So, yeah, and the reason is because that's the default search in that little search window, or actually it'll be in the awesome bar. That's the, uh, that's where you go. And, uh, and those search results, Google gives a cut of money made from those search results to Mozilla. And that's been a lot of, that's been what's has kept the foundation going. So that's a shocker. It is. Well, Yahoo must be paying, must be paying them as much. No, I mean, for them to leave. I guess that's well, maybe more. Well, the cash is going from, yeah. Maybe more. You know, uh, Mozilla, uh, Firefox seems to be moving in the direction of being the privacy browser. You know, just as Apple is distinguishing itself from Android by saying, well, we care about your privacy, Google doesn't, Firefox lately seems to be doing the same. Uh, and so it makes sense they might move away from Google. Not that Yahoo is in any way going to protect your privacy, but... I kind of expected DuckDuckGo to uh, announce something with it, Firefox. Well, honestly. one of the things Firefox did do yesterday in the latest version is make DuckDuckGo an easy choice mm -hmm. in their search. Mm -hmm. It's one of the default searches. Yep, that makes sense. Yep. So, wow, yeah, that is a breaking story. Big story. The other story I find fascinating, if I may, is the Google project that auto-captions photos. 
Did you see that one in the rundown? How do they know? Uh, it's like, like one of the photos is two dogs running. Oh. <laughs> this well, is the beginning. That's, that's, Isn't this the beginning of Skynet, really? It's pretty amazing. If they can start to interpret uh, images, look at some of those examples. Two hockey, young hockey people players playing are fighting way. over the puck. Well, that you can pretty much say on anybody who has a mask on. Now, um, can I get this, or is this something internal? Uh, this is a project right now. It's just a project. But this is pretty phenomenal that this kind of recognition and trans of, of images and translation into searchable, analyzable, findable text, a herd of elephants walking across a dry grass field. Yeah, that's some smarts. I mean, so they're turning the knowledge graph inside out, right? They're showing us. <laughs> hat with a wide brim dog. Dog wearing hat with a wide brim would be the, wow. That's pretty impressive. The, the, here's the one. The group of people shopping at an outdoor market. There are many vegetables at the fruit stand. So you're like at a four-year-old huh. four level. Yeah, wow. but geez. That's impressive. Really impressive. It, yeah, this is, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, this is a research paper, but wow. I'm not tapping this into Google Glass or something like that like well, for, that for like, like accessibility. For the first time in a year? <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. Well, you know, I was thinking about the other day. I, 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 went to the, I went to the Barnes & Noble and ended up going to the men's room. I'm sure you're glad you know that. And I saw the, <laughs> the Braille on the door, and I'm thinking... You know, how does the blind person find the damn door to do the Braille? And I'm thinking, well, there's no reason you couldn't have a map of the store and directions in the store and audio directions to say 20 steps forward, two to the right, there's the men's room. But you start to map out the world in these ways. Phenomenal things can happen. Yeah. Yeah, or <laughs> Forbin, Colossus, the Forbin project. It could go either way. I like the uh, the examples that are completely wrong. So there's a photo of a parking sign, and it's a refrigerator filled with lots of food and drinks. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. One of the dog there's... is catching the frisbee. <laughs> the yellow school bus parked in a parking lot. That's actually not too far off. The the, the refrigerator is the worst one here. The other That's one is fabulous. a dog catching catch a frisbee. Yeah, I, I, is there... you can see how it might make that mistake. The dog isn't even jumping in that picture. For those of you listening on audio, we're just looking at fairly simple pictures and misinterpretations. <laughs> but it's still phenomenal. It is. That's amazing. I'm going to download this. I can be an actress. I can be a computer engineer for my Kindle right now. Is that the Barb? Yeah. Book? So Gizmodo published this yesterday, and already the, the that's what we were seeing on Mil Milkshake. I couldn't figure out why on Milkshake I was seeing all these Barbie images. Apparently... Yeah. There's a book you can buy, Barbie. It's, it's on the rundown. Yeah. Is it? Barbie yeah, can. No, you got, no, no, you got it. There's a good book. Barbie, right, but, I can be a computer engineer. Which, and God bless. God bless. Let's let's let's. Let's just take a look at uh, a bre at breakfast one morning. Barbie's already hard at work on our laptop. What are you doing, Barbie? Asked Skipper. I'm designing a game that shows kids how computers work. Explains Barbie. You can make a robot puppy do cute tricks by matching up <laughs> colored blocks. Okay. Okay. Not so bad. Um, your robot I'm puppy is sweet, says I'm Skipper. Can I play your game? Oh, I'm only creating the design ideas, Barbie says, laughing. <laughs> I'll need Stephen and Brian's help no. to turn it into a real God, game. God, help us no. all. Oh, it gets worse. Barbie oh, tries to no. email her design to Stephen, but suddenly her screen is starts real blinking. Or is this the jokes? This is real. Oh, no. That's weird, says Barbie. Barbie and Skipper try to reboot the computer, but nothing happens. Looks like you've got a virus, big sister, says Skipper. <laughs> Luckily, I wear my flash drive on a necklace, so I'll always remember to back up my work, replies Barbie. Uh, when Barbie, Barbie puts her flash drive into Skipper's laptop, the screen starts blinking. Oh, no, says Barbie. The virus must be on the flash drive. I forgot to back up my homework assignment, cries Skipper, and all my music files are lost, too. Fortunately... And by the way, then she hits, playfully hits Barbie with a pillow. Because that's always fun when girls have pillow fights. Barbie makes it to computer class just before the bell rings. As soon as the class begins, Barbie raises her hand. Yes, Barbie? 
asks Ms. Smith, the teacher. If your computer gets a virus and crashes, how can you retrieve all the files you lost? Asks Barbie. And then there, Ms. Smith gives it a, a fairly good answer. Uh, not so bad. Remove the hard drive. But let's let's go uh, let's go talk to Stephen and Brian, the geeks. Hi guys, says Barbie. I tried to send my designs, but I ended up crashing my laptop and Skipper's too. I need to get back the lost files and repair both of our laptops. It'll go faster if Brian and I help. Offers Stephen. By the way, you want to take a ride in my Uber? Great, says Barbie. <laughs> Stephen, can you help hook up Skipper's hard drive to the library computer? Sure, says Stephen. The library computer has excellent security software to protect it. <laughs> anyway, so that's the meme now, is to take the these... If you go to the rundown, uh, the last thing under other, it's uh, make your own Barbie computer. So <laughs> the meme has to get off. <laughs> Thank God for Brian and Skipper. That's all I can say, because... Barbie. Brian and Steven. Brian and you know, Steven, I, I yeah. actually, I, I didn't read that story. I, I saw it a few times. I avoided it because I'm so worried that Barbie is like inevitably in my future. Like, like that. I'm gonna, we're, yeah. we're gonna have to reckon with Barbie. Uh, you no, know, to in be my house. fair, as bad as this is, it could be worse. I mean, they are. <laughs> it would have been. I mean, Ms. Smith is uh, the the female teacher is smart and knows yeah. a little bit about computers and. Yeah. At computer Thank class, you know, Barbie so presents the be... game she designed. Mrs. Smith is so impressed that she gives Barbara extra credit. Barbie's terrific computer skills have saved the day for both sisters. I guess I can be a computer engineer, says Barbie happily. Uh, so she, a... she discovers it doesn't need. It's about what you'd expect. The only thing that's really bad is when she says, huh, I'm not designing the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just yeah. drawing the designs. I need Steven and Brian's help to turn it into a real game. That's where maybe you could have left that line out. I mean, what were they thinking? I I don't they know. Thinking? It it could be worse. Listen, I'm never gonna look at look to Barbie for uh, you know, a progressive take yeah. on, you, you, on you know where you're gonna snap. be, Gina, where, where I used to go is American Girl. I uh, that is another aspect of Oh, um, I, I loved American Girl. Up. That was not too bad. It was not too bad. No. Well, some of the stories are actually very good. No, American Girl was fine. And Abby and I yeah. went to Chicago to the American Girls doll museum, and we had tea. We, they have a little chair at the table for your doll and her tea. Oh, yeah. And and the stories are, I think, pretty empowering. Now, I'll have to link, think back. Pretty empowering. They're all about young women in history going and so a bunch of historic periods. And and it's it's I think they're all powerful and good, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they're they're okay, Gina. Really, really, the, the stories are okay. okay. They're, they're... Here's here's yeah. a, an example of the internet's response to Barbie. So Barbie's sitting at the computer. Skippy Skipper's pouring. Instead of saying, "Oh no, I'm just designing it. I'm going to ask the boys to do the work," she says, "Poor mine with an extra espresso shot, sis. Some scrub decided to link directly to Atlas instead of generic blast and law pack. <laughs> so now I have to write patches to get this BS to link against Accelerate dot framework instead. I am not about to pollute slash user slash local slash lib with a bunch of stupid dependencies. This awful shared library model is why Linux can't Linux have nice can't things. Have nice things. Now that's my Barbie." <laughs> Awesome. That is awesome. That's my Barbie. That's what I'm going to do with that. In these situations, I'm going to, we're going to rewrite the story. Yeah, just, I'm going to say, all right, let's take go. the panels and ha hack it. How you just you get to do story? that because she can't read yet. Yeah. So you just read it to her this way. Oh, I, you have no idea. I change the words. My wife laughs and laughs. Every line about the little girl loving hot pink, I'm like, oh, I really hate hot pink. I change the words. I say mama and mommy. I, I, I mean, Good. I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I love to riff on, on kids' books. So if you all of a sudden see a lot of Barbie and computers in your meme feed, that's where that's coming from. That's where that's and coming from. And the response from. has been pretty darn excellent. I'm going to have her publish her own books. That's what I'm going to do. There gonna you have. go. Yeah. Give her a copy of Vellum. Let her, let her have at it. Get nuts. The Oral History of the Poop Emoji by Fast oh, Company. It, <laughs> nice reading. Oh. Did you put this in here? No, I did not. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Sorry about that, Leo. <laughs> this is this is important journalism. Dude. Yeah. It, it said the word know. Google, and I was like, okay. <laughs> There's a Google story. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, the Pumoji. Pumoji. It's good. It's good for a Actually, good, it's, a, oh, yeah. it's a history of emojis and yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera. If you go up three, the compilation of videos about the internet from the 80s and 90s. Oh, yeah. We've played some of those on our show. Yeah. Okay, they're great. Yeah, they're they're hysterical. 
Um, and in fact, I'm guilty of I'm guilty for some of these because I, of course, did a PBS yes. show called The Internet! Exclamation mark, yeah. <laughs> which I try to explain. Yeah, the other good video is the. And I don't know if this is. These are all from Andy Bio. This is Andy Bio's channel on the. Andy Bio's, yes, it's, it's a great, great list. I want to see Steve Allen and Jane Meadows' computer video from 1984. What the what? This is the VHS era internet. Don't you love the graphics? Computability, starring Steve Allen, which most of our audience never heard of, and Jane Meadows. Index. The computability home cassette has been indexed with a color code for your convenience. The introduction. Oh, I got a jump pad a little bit. Let's just see. Let's just see some hacker. Enthusiast who eats, oh. drinks, and sleeps computers. Now, a hacker would definitely own a modem. This is a device that changes the electronic impulses in the computer into sounds that can be carried over a telephone line. Very useful for communicating with other computers, data banks, information services, etc. As you'll see. Tape drives. <laughs> tape drives are much slower than the disc type because they store the data sequentially. Just I love like her music. faux British There's accent. Other terms, most of which you'll never need. You'll pick up a lot of them the more you work with your Kids, actresses in the uh, 30s and 40s often affected British accents, even though they were from the Bronx. Because learning a lot of new words can be And what's with the hair? But I guarantee in a few weeks you'll be using these terms as easily as counting from 1 to 10. I have no idea what any of them means, but I'm reading the teleprompter yeah. well. But you know what? I have to say, I love Steve Allen and Jay Meadows, so I'm going to watch this. <laughs> Look at his hair. I think his hair is higher than hers. This is just what he's like at home. Yeah, that was the early Jay Lo. Yeah. Steve Allen invented The Tonight Show, practically. Many of the jokes that you see people like Letterman and even Fallon do now. We're started by Steve Allen. All right, let's uh, do a commercial. We're Unless you see one more story, if you find something you want, uh, the poop emoji grabbed me. Uh, <laughs> I thought it might. Yeah. I thought it might, yeah. Uh, this yeah, is good news. We talked about this on Security Now. WhatsApp is going to add end-to-end -end encryption from the open-source text-secure messaging system. That's from Open Whisper Systems. That is a really strong encryption, strong solution. Of course, as soon as it's within WhatsApp, Maybe you don't know exactly how they implement it, but I think this is really great news. And it shows that Facebook, I think Facebook's kind of thinking, along with these other big companies, Google and, and Apple and Microsoft, how can we how can we get out from under the NSA? And let's and not forget that the uh, the bill to restrict the NSA um, was defeated yesterday. Failed. So yeah, uh, needed what it was is they they it was it's a one of those weird votes. They needed a supermajority because it was a vote to debate. And so they needed 60 votes. They only got 50. Oh, your government works. Or not. <laughs> That's the case, maybe. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, let's uh, wrap this up. Uh, I, think we got, I think we got all the big, the big stories in here. Uh, and we're going to get your uh, tip and number and tool of the week in just a minute. But first, a word from Squarespace. That's my tip of the week. Get your website. Hi the over to squarespace.com, the best website hosting and content management system all in one we were talking about google and the search results uh, letting you know whether a site is mobile friendly all squarespace sites are automatically mobile friendly because their templates are all mobile responsive that means the design looks great no matter what size screen you don't even have to think about it start with 25 actually more they, they keep adding new templates beautiful templates many of them designed for specific categories like musicians or artists, or architects, or chefs. Um, that gives you a great starting point. The band uh, template, Horizon, for instance, has a tour dates page, a music player, uh, and a merchandise store. In fact, all the Squarespace templates are e-commerce enabled, which is nice. Uh, you, you, even if you just uh, you know want to do a wedding register, all cash wedding registry, or uh, donations for a school, you know, library. Squarespace 7 is new, and it really adds some nice features, including the ability to live edit on a single screen so you don't have to go back and forth between preview and site manager. You can even preview designs in device mode, so you'll see how your design will look on a tablet or a mobile device. You get instant access to professional stock photography from Getty. Instant branded email setup with Google Apps. And the new developer platform is so sweet. If you, if you are a guru of web design, if you're a JavaScript or CSS or HTML user you'll love the dev platform with the color-coded syntax and all easy to use but if you need help 24 7 support from their offices live chat and email 24 
Seven plus self-help articles, video workshops, and their newly redesigned help portal. It's really great. And all this, $8 a month, and that includes a free domain name when you sign up for a year. But better than that, if you just visit squarespace.com and click the Get Started button, you can just set up a site right now. Play with all the tools, even import your existing content. And you'll see how easy it is to change the template without changing the content. It's just, it's exactly modern, state-of-the-art web design and hosting. You're going to love it. Start that free two-week trial. You don't need to give them a credit card. If you decide to buy, all I ask is use our offer code TWIG, T-W-I-G, and uh, that way you get 10% off. And you tell them you heard it on this week in Google. If you are an existing Squarespace 7 customer, by the way, I'm sorry, if you're a Squarespace 6 customer, you can turn on 7 if you go to the uh, Settings tab and click Activate. That way you'll get all the new features. Squarespace.com. Click the Get Started button. Use the offer code TWIG to save 10%. We thank them so much. They have been long-term supporters of uh, this show and uh, all of our network, and we're happy to say we'll be back with us as um, almost all of our sponsors will in 2015. We're starting to sign up people for next year. Lots of interest. Glad to say. Let us get your tip of the week, Gina Trapani. So I must get asked a couple of times a week, it feels like, uh, for advice from listeners, from, from the shows or, or just online in general. You know, I want to learn how to program. Where should I start? What languages should I use? You know, where do I start? And, and that's a really hard thing to, hard question to answer, especially in a tweet. Uh, but I suspect that a lot of young people, especially young people, but lots of people want a job at Google. Um, and Google has actually, Google for Education anyway, has published a list of uh, a guide for technical development, a suggested list of courses and subjects for people, for aspiring software engineers to teach themselves. This doesn't, of course, guarantee a job at Google, uh, but these are really good uh, recommendations, um, academic recommendations and non-academic recommendations. So if you're a student in school and you want to teach yourself or or not, um, some really good stuff here. It, uh, they're all links to third-party courses, uh, some on Coursera, some from the various universities uh, on, you know, what Google thinks is worth is worth uh, learning. So you got your introduction to computer science course, programming in at least one object-oriented programming language. This is pretty, this is skewed very Google. So Google uses Java and Python primarily. Uh, so they, of course, recommend learning C++, Java, or Python. Then, of course, all the languages of the web, JavaScript, CSS, HTML. But some really, really great stuff here on debugging and testing and artificial intelligence and building compilers and cryptography. Awesome resource here. So if you're really interested in learning uh, and becoming a, pro a programmer and or becoming a, a software engineer or, or, you know, starting a new career in that, I think this is actually a really good, really good place to start. Uh, it's Google's Guide for Technical Development. I, I'm sure that if you, if you Google that, it'll be the first thing that comes up. That's neat. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a helpful, helpful way. And I mean, there's so many resources out there to teach yourself. Um, you know, some, some, you know, sponsors of these shows and and Code Academy and, and lots of different, lots of different things. It's it's hard to know where to start, and I feel like this is a good, a good uh, starting point. Absolutely, absolutely. Jeff, your number of the week. Um, well, I think I'll take this one. Uh, Flurry, owned by Yahoo, has done an analysis to show that time spent on mobile devices now exceeds time spent on television. Wow. Mobile is the first screen. That's a pretty big deal. Wow. So how much in, how many hours a day? Two hours and fifty seven minutes a day versus two hours and forty eight minutes daily uh, on TV, according to the wow. US Department uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Or or huh. on labor statistics, I guess in this case. Um, Bureau labor, of Labor yeah. Statistics does <laughs> measures time on TV and mobile? Interesting. With so many people unemployed know. these days, it's really important to know. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So, so if you, if you click on the link to the to the BLS, watching TV two point hours a day, relaxing and thinking eighteen minutes a day. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's the problem. How we only you... think, along with relax, eighteen minutes a day. There's the problem. How do you even measure that? I mean, who knows how? No. How much it's time do I spend thinking? I think they don't mean thinking. I think they mean on the can. <laughs> <laughs> But that's just a thought. Uh, uh, reading 19 minutes a day. Oh. But if you're your computer, you're reading. Right. Yeah. Right. That's th a so good point. Reading paper is separate than reading on the screen? 
apparently. Mm. You know, that's that, not real reading, Gina. That's an interesting point, though. <laughs> we probably now read more than ever before, thanks oh, to yeah, the Oh, yeah, I think so. No doubt, no doubt. I read a lot of articles, a lot of stuff online. I read probably a magazine's worth every day. I'd opt to read a user interface of an app before talk to an actual human any day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, come to think of it. Well, here's one more app that'll keep you on your phone. We were talking about Uniqlo. Tony Wang messaged me and said, my favorite Uniqlo uh, product is their Wake Me app. Let me show you uh, the uh -oh, website. This you're is, kidding me. Yeah, look at this. It's Uniqlo Wake Up. I think the uh, app is uniqlo.com slash wake up. And it wakes you up with music appropriate to the day's weather. And on Friday, today is a... This is very day. Japanese. Super Japanese. Yeah. In a good, good way. Morning. All right, I'm going to set this up. Phone and throw it out the window. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Jeff. <laughs> today is Shut a up. Uniqlo day. They have other apps, by the way. You can design a Uniqlo t-shirt on uh, your phone and whatever. This is for iOS and Android. Uniqlo... Wake up, it's called. Let me set it up because I just downloaded it for the... Oh, network error. I'm having trouble with this phone. It seems this Which is a Galaxy that? Note 4, and it seems to be confused about the network, the Wi-Fi. Wow. I see a network here. I don't understand. Maybe, maybe it's... Uh, maybe I'll turn off the... I'll go to the mobile network. Maybe that'll make it work better. Uniqlo, wake up. Hello. Wake up with music that changes with the weather. Share the start of your day. Should I have it in English, Mandarin, or none? I'm going to have English, Fahrenheit. I don't think I'll share this with Ren Ren or Weibo. Maybe Facebook or Twitter. You can tell it's a Chinese uh, app. And uh, now I guess it's going to uh, get the weather forecast. How oh, interesting. The page brings you the latest Uniqlo wake-up news. Apparently there is none. It's got a little clock. I could set the alarm. I should set an alarm. Uh... Oh, I have to do this up here. Set an alarm for now. Yeah, there you go. World time. It's starting to, it's starting to wake me up. Uh, oh, no. Let's go back. I want to wake up. Wake me up again. Let's add another alarm. Let's make this 514. Save. That was kind of pretty music, though. Yeah. Tony, Tony says he loves this. It's free. I like it. U N I Q L O Uniqlo. Wake up, wake up with music that changes the weather, and then I guess you can share the star. See, she's sleeping with her phone, and she's looking out the window. So maybe she's going to share. On Friday, today is a sunny day. Oh Lord! <laughs> this was on the Android app arena. Oh, so this was a uh, Ron's pick, I believe, way back a while ago. I hope you a while, while him. back. Yeah, I hope uh, we we him. had a we had a good bit about it actually, if I remember correctly. <laughs> How could you not? Sunny day. <laughs> oh, oh. Hello. It's three fourteen p.m. on Wednesday. Today is a cloudy day. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I was. <laughs> 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 It's going to keep going. Makes you want to just use the poop emoji, doesn't Hello. it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. There you go. Tony Wang's tool of. Thanks the day. so much, Tony. Good Tony, job, are, Tony. You, are you wearing um, a Uniqlo a shirt? Yeah, I bet he is. I bet he is. Hey, Jeff, did your uh, did anything come uh, while we were uh, doing the show? Did you check the? Uh, nope, nope, nope. I've been checking the app. I, I checked the doors for an earlier um, commercial break, but did nothing. All right, okay. We're both waiting for our Nexus Six. It's a race. Gina Turpani is at Think Up. Don't forget, you can take advantage of a special d bundle right now. If you want to get Think Up along with some other great stuff, what's the URL for that again? Goodwebbundle.com. Good, it's a good gift. The Good Web Bundle. Goodwebbundle.com. Yeah, thanks, Leo. Thank you, Gina. a lot Gina. of fun today. Yeah. yeah. Oops, I'm, not, I'm actually not on that site. I am using, though, that really great Google extension that shows beautiful land masses on know, my new I tab. It. I know. I kept, I kept it on mine, too. Oh, I love I it. Live I just it. absolutely love it. And, there, and by the way, it changes all the time. There's always fresh stuff. 
Yeah. Well, but but it also it does recycle some. Some. I see some repeats. Well, I, yeah, but I think that that might be within a short period of time because I'm I'm I haven't seen any of these before. I've seen, no, I've seen some from a couple days before, but it still is magnificent. It's really beautiful. My, my problem is I'll open a new tab and go do something, and then I want to go. I want to hit the back button to see what I just. I just <laughs> yeah. Let well, me get that tab yeah. again. I get distracted, like, oh, what was I doing? Where is that place? You know, <laughs> <It's>, like. <laughs> we live in a beautiful planet, don't we? We do. It's a beautiful do. world. Uh, just a gorgeous world. I wonder how they select these images. <laughs> they probably have an algorithm. I'm, I'm sure that there's do. some bot who's like, this is visually interesting. This is visually interesting. <laughs> Let us see if we should, I bet you, if the, the number of, there's an algorithm about the number of colors, the shapes. <laughs> there is. There's something. This is pleasing to the human eye. Here's a dog <laughs> jumping my, for a ball. My humans would enjoy this refrigerator <laughs> full of food. Yes, my human overlords <laughs> would, 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 would get distracted by this photo. So this will calm just, them down as I take over their lives. Just a matter of time. Skynet is coming. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis is a professor of journalism at the City University of New York. Hi, Mary. He's the best. His new book is Out Geeks Bearing Gifts, Managing uh, New Futures, Futures for, news. for News. And you can find that on it's, Amazon. It's pretty damn wonky, folks. It's no, wonky. no, no. This is exactly the question I was talking about earlier. Uh, there it is. We need to solve this problem so that we can uh, know what's true. I don't. I, I despair of that, but we'll see. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It, uh, it is every Wednesday at 1 p.m. that we do this show. That's Pacific time, uh, Pacific Standard Time. We do it at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 2100 UTC live on twit.tv. After the fact, you can get audio and video of the show from twit.tv slash twig uh, or from our youtube.com slash this week in Google or from whatever uh, podcast app you like. There are a lot of them, including Stitcher and Instacast and Slacker and a pot the app named podcast on your phone i use a dog catcher on android like that a lot i still using that yeah huh? it's really good pocket cast is good what do you use yeah, pocket cast pocket cast, yeah, I pocket cast. To pocket me cast. Too. you switch too huh yeah maybe i ought to switch yeah. i don't know just anything that downloads a show that i can listen to or yeah watch later. totally I mean, they all do, do that so <laughs> yeah. there's a twit app podcast. i recommend that I think a podcast does the syncing across devices. That's what I, uh, I really like. It remembers where nice you are thing. and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because that's one of the things we're uh, talking about in the API is the ability to save user state so that you so that we know where you stopped watching or listening to a show so that when you use something else, it'll say, would you like to start where you left off? Oh. Non-trivial. Well, Non-trivial at all. You're, that's, you do, that's some advanced stuff there, Leo. Good for you, but watch out for scope creep. Yeah, well, you know what? Oh, and someday we'll talk about this. Uh, Four Kitchens is very agile. I mean, like, dogmatically yep. agile. Yep. And yep. so we use scrums. Uh, we use um, that whole points technique to assign points. We have a backlog. We we groom the backlog. <laughs> I'm learning all these weird, oh, scrummy... Burn, burn down charts. Yeah, all of that Story stuff. Storyboards. Yeah. Yep. User stories. We, have, uh, we, we came up with hundreds of user stories. You know what? It would be a very interesting special to do sometime. So have you have you used this methodology? I have. I'm not, I'm not a zealot, and I haven't used the more advanced stuff. Uh, but I do. I'm, I'm a big fan of burn down charts, uh, just as for, for, as a way to you know assess how much work and estimating, breaking down tasks, and you know cha changing the burn. Um, but uh, and and stand up. So I, I'm sort of light. I find I find these methodologies super super interesting, and I learn. I, I'm kind of a cap. You know, as a cafeteria Catholic, I'm a cafeteria agile. <laughs> you know, I take I take. Well, we are I working with the Pope. And, let me tell you, of <laughs> yeah, agile. With the Pope. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow. I, I'm I I'm personally always a little wary of the kind of the folks that are like one true way I right. must do it exactly but but I think it, I mean, I think it does work I mean if you have a, if you have an, a, a development shop that's that's just committed to the methodology and that's a language they speak and it works for everyone that's great I've never been on a team where everyone was fully on board and fully committed so it's always been kind of piecemeal for me yeah no this but, is uh, pretty serious we have a certified scrum master Paul Benjamin is running this thing like a like clockwork. Oh. You we got have, the scrum master. Nice. A scrum master. We have stand-ups every day. Um, nice. Yeah, we get spanked if we don't show up. Uh, it's really good uh, so far. Uh, it is process-heavy at the beginning, and so there's some debate yeah. over how much process. We're going to spend a lot of money on process right now. But I think yeah. that this is what you have to do to make sure that we, as the project owners, get our needs heard. 
Yes. Um, and 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 the, the developers understand the job that they need to do. That's the hardest thing I think in software development. So yeah, there's a lot of value I think to formalizing that, especially if you're working with a with a third party. I think, I think that that's great. Yeah. I would love to see that special. Okay, when uh, when the four kitchens people come here, maybe we'll do it. The um, making of the making of it's dri it's driving certain of us crazy. <laughs> Wait, now, so, okay, so well, I want to hear more about that. Uh, I, that'll I, have to I be an be offline on conversation. I, okay. I'm, I have, uh, I understand how much geeks love process, and sometimes to the point where we love process rather than doing anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, you ever use the getting things done methodology. Many yes. a geek has done 43 folders and set it all up just so, but never gets anything done. But, man, they have yeah. a system. And so I always want to temper the love of the system with an actual de desire to get work done. But I think it's getting done. And if I tell you what, we'll know at the end. If you like the new Twit site, then then it will have worked. Absolutely. Yeah. We uh, do use software that supports Scrum. We're using Atlassian Jira, of course, one of our uh, sponsors. Actually, uh, Four Kitchens has always used Jira, so that was no problem. We use hit. We have our own hip chat chat channel at all times and. It's really, Jira is amazing. Jira really is all about, you know, the agile uh, experience. Yeah, if you're using a tool that's geared for a particular methodology, it's that's great. Yeah, yeah. 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 <sighs> Eric, uh, a couple of people in the chat room are familiar with this. One of them says, all projects with Scrum feel process heavy at first, but it pays off big time in the end. That's that's how That's I, what they always say. That's, that's what they always say, isn't it? Yeah. You're going to love the result. Well, well, the proof is in the pudding. We'll see. Anyway, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Gina. We love you. And thanks to you for being here. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye.